beloved one i hope you are doing well i want us to take a short reading from the book of psalms chapter 127 it says if god's grace doesn't help the builders they will labor in vain to build a house if god's mercy doesn't protect the city all the centuries will circle it in vain it's really a senseless to work so hard from morning till late at night toiling to make a living for fear of not having enough now god can provide i want you to see this it says god can provide for his devoted lovers even while this need. now this tells us of the great things that we enjoy anytime we come into God's presence. It tells us of the blessings we enjoy anytime we are with God. And then we can do this through prayer, through the Word of God, and even as we are about listening to this. So I want us to do something. We are going to like this video. So then please hit on the like button if you have not done so. This helps YouTube recommend this video out there to anyone so everyone can have access to it also by doing this you help in the spread of the gospel and of the good work of this channel then don't forget to leave a comment in that comment section hit on that subscribe button if you haven't done so and you are new here and then get on to the notification bell and do us the favor of tapping on it too you were blessed son. stay blessed there are many people who come for meetings and find out there's no seed, there's no nothing. They say, let's go back. And they carry their trouble, their mindsets and go back and remain where they are. It takes a level of desperation. The woman said to herself, if I may but touch the hem of his garment. She was determined. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. It's good to have everyone around. I bless God for what he's doing in this place. And I hope you have the grace to see and celebrate when you see God doing great things. Not just by clapping, but telling him thank you. I always tell people, if I had the opportunity to receive what some of us are receiving free of charge without paying for it, I assure you, I would have been 10 times better than I am right now. Hallelujah. What some of you are getting at a platter of gold came under tears, blood, fastings persecutions that you cannot imagine i hope that you will value it hallelujah the beauty of leadership is that you reduce the journey for others if it took me 10 years to get to this level i should shorten your journey to take two years this is how you multiply your success that's why we are giving everything without hiding but the Bible says, do not cast your pearl before swine. We are not asking you to pay for it. We are only asking you to value it. Hallelujah. Praise God. Among the many things that we thank God for doing in our midst, uh, four major things. I call them our core values. And I've preached this for years. It's important to know what you, we want you to become. When you enter a university system, for instance, you are given an idea of what you will become at the end of your program. Hallelujah. In the corporate world, we call it the law of clarity. When you state very clearly the things that you want, you give people a mental picture of what you believe they will become. Hallelujah. And we seek to do four major things in this place. Number one, to communicate the love of Jesus. That everyone who comes out from among us the first thing we want the world to see in your life is not power, it's not healing, it's love that comes with the presence of God. Write it. That's our number one core value, love. Love. The Bible says, by this shall all men know that ye are my disciples, not when you are called apostle or prophet. Love. Love is a symbol of God's presence. It's a symbol of maturity in the spirit. Number two, character. What we seek to impart in you is character. Character. Hallelujah. Not only do we want people who have the love of God in them, but men and women who are furnished, like Prof said, character. That's the second core value that we have in this place. Everything we do is around these decisions. 
Number three, the anointing of the Holy Spirit. We believe in the place of the anointing. We believe that without the Holy Spirit, it's impossible for you to really be transformed and be equipped and to face the pressures and the challenges of life and establish the kingdom of heaven here in the earth. So the anointing. Number four, excellence. It's our job not just to make anointed and careless and non-challenged people like we have in our society. Anointed men of God who are careless, non-challenged, but we want people who are excellent. Say after me, excellence. It's my heart desire every time I pray for you, I pray these four things. And I say, Lord, put upon your people the spirit of excellence. Hallelujah. Where you become so skilled, you become so competent. And you notice that all the messages that we preach are centered around and honor these core values. Hallelujah. We are not confused about what we want you to become. We are not just guessing. Uh, 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 uh. It's a map. Are you listening to me? We are following a definite blueprint. There is a spiritual curriculum we are following. If we follow it diligently, you will become it at the end. This is called vision. Hallelujah. For the Bible says, write the vision. He said what? Make it plain. That's what I'm doing right now. I do it all the time. So that you know, as I'm coming for Koinonia, I'm not just going to church. See it like a school. See it like a training ground. If someone asks you, okay, so what are you going to achieve at the end of two or three years or four years? If you cannot tell them the end of it, you've been wasting your time. Please go and sleep. Hallelujah. You should know what you will become so that you can expect it and you can track your progress. Are you listening to me? So that when it is raining, for instance, and you come outside and you have to stand in the rain, you say, rain, you can follow me. This principle I'm learning will make this be the last time that this rain will ever fall on me. It's better for it to fall on you once than to fall on you forever because of not listening. Are you listening to me? The Bible says, they know not, neither do they understand. They said they grope in darkness and as a result, the earth is out of course. He said, but have I not said, ye are gods and all of you are children of the Most High. He said, but you shall die like men, men and fall like one of these princes. And so you must understand that when it comes to hearing the word of God, keep the issue of luxury aside. Hello? Can you hear me inside and outside? Keep that issue of is there fan? Is there AC? We believe in excellence, but you must realize that you are a general on training. Are you listening to me? And nobody who is trained, the Bible says there is no man that warreth who will entangle himself with activities of civilians. It will cost you. It will cost you your transport. It will cost you tears. I will shout at you. I will rebuke you. You will not like me, but I won't stop until something, hallelujah, comes out of your destiny. Praise the Lord. So core value number one, help me. Number one, this is what we want you to become. Number two, character number three the anointing we believe in the ministry of the Holy Spirit don't just say it's for them number four excellence say after me excellence very important thank you Jesus for what you are doing we thank you for the gift of vision and we thank you because we can structurally build people and make them wonders even like david in the name of jesus hallelujah praise the lord all right bring out something to write please stop bringing can i have this buy something like this hallelujah please buy a very good notebook that no matter how careless you are you won't tear it around so that you can document some of these things Hallelujah. Many of you are always writing. But when we say write, you just search your pocket and check and bring out one paper. 
that you wrote list to go to the you won't whatever you do not value you won't attract to your life hallelujah whatever you dishonor repels you praise god write the following words down thank you jesus number one mediocrity write the following words down one mediocrity what does it mean to be a mediocre it means to be ordinary it means to be of moderate quality to be of moderate quality another definition mediocrity means it's neither good nor bad it's not spectacular but it's not wrong anyway barely adequate barely adequate common inferior these are the words that describe what it means to live in mediocrity or to be a mediocre I'll come again because I want you to get it hallelujah you see let me teach you something we're going to teach it in the Bible school it's called homiletics that's the theological name the art of preaching repent from this jargon kind of preaching that people do no 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 and people are nodding you are not getting anything at the end of it what did you get you are not being changed if that's how your lecturer teaches you i assure you you will never graduate see the goal of teaching i'm not preaching are you listening to me to preach means to declare to teach means to explain there is a difference preaching gives you knowledge teaching gives you understanding the word of god is taught the gospel is preached so for many of you who just go nah, 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 you're just rapping and ranting uh -uh, calm down are the people following if you leave the people more confused you ended up wasting their time and their destinies hallelujah that's why i'm taking it slowly because i really want you to get this have you written the first word so what does it mean ordinary of moderate quality write down the second word indifference indifference those of you outside the lord will bless you i'm seeing you from here and i'm telling you my see i look forward to a big auditorium mighty auditorium where there will be light everywhere and those of you who are doubting will not be there oh yes that's what they told that's what he told he said you will see it but you eat of it when prof was saying ah one of the best institutes some of you are saying ah really it's not your fault you're a student when we are done with you we'll kick out that mindset in jesus name so write quickly indifference it means lack of interest please take note of that word we'll be discussing it seriously today lack of interest number two it means lack of concern lack of sympathy lack of interest lack of concern lack of sympathy another word nonchalance i mean another definition of indifference nonchalance nonchalance it's what nigerians call i don't care attitude don't write that don't write that you're a leader don't write that i'm just helping you understand say i'm a leader say it i'm a leader, I'm a leader. indifference the third word excellence write down this word excellence what does it mean the quality of being unusually good the quality of being unusually good the quality of being unusually good the quality of having superior merit to be of superior merit 
being exceptional. Surpassing ordinary standards. I like that. Surpassing ordinary standards. That's what it means to be excellent. Surpassing ordinary standards. Being extraordinary. In other words, above the ordinary. Possessing the highest or finest quality. Excellence. Write down the last word. Change. C-H-A-N-G-E. Change. It means to transform or to convert. Change. Change means to transform. It means to convert. It means to become different or to undergo an alteration. Change means to become different or undergo an alteration. To be altered. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Now, our discussion tonight is going to be around these four words. And please, I pray with all my heart. And I'm still praying to God as I'm standing here that within these few minutes, I will wrestle something in your mind and shake out anything that is not of God. And if you believe that, say amen. amen. Hallelujah. I'm teaching tonight on dominion through excellence. Dominion through excellence. Dominion through excellence. The greatest enemy that I've found in my life and from the word of God, the greatest enemy of excellence is an attitude of indifference. The greatest hindrance, the greatest enemy to a life of excellence is indifference. Hallelujah. And now, look up please everybody. Now you can look up. Let me teach you why. When you examine the body of Christ, you find out that we covered a bit of that in our full gospel series. You can get the teachings. Very important. But you find out that in the body of Christ, there is an emphasis on what I want to call the spiritual side of life. Hallelujah. Every Sunday, you just stand on the road and you see people moving from place to place. Ask them, where am I going to? Say, church. Say for what? Say to worship. What does that mean? I don't know. And they are moving. And so, you have people who are moving from one place to the other. And suddenly, when two people are gisting, when they step into church, they stop talking. They assume, uh, what do we call it now? An attitude. A sacred attitude. And they sit down. And now, the pastor sits down and just discusses and then just gets up and changes his form. And comes up and begins to preach and talk. And everybody just sits down and behaves himself. And then we end the service by sharing the grace. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. The love of God. Be with us now and forevermore. Amen. And everybody resumes to what they want to call what? Their normal lives. Hallelujah. And now the tragedy that has happened in the body of Christ is that. We have taught because of certain revelations like. The favor of God, the sovereignty of God, the mercy of God, um, destiny help us, you know, powerful teachings like this. We have had a lot of emphasis on these teachings and it has really not helped the body in some measures because it has brought people to a point where certain things like competence, certain things like excellence 
certain things like diligence, certain things like determination, certain things like knowledge, study, um, hard work, and so on and so forth is no longer respected. Hallelujah. Why should I be diligent when overnight God can give me houses I did not build? Hallelujah. Why should I be diligent when I can just sit down and I can't speak English? But then I can find myself in, in the television ministry and I can heal the sick. Hallelujah. Why should I be excellent? And you know, the sad thing is this. Let me tell you where that error came from. Many men of God left everything to go into a genuine pursuit for God. Are you listening to me? They cut themselves away from society. The Bible says through desire, Proverbs 18 verse 1, a man having separated himself, he said, he intermeddled with all wisdom. And so, in the course of the sacrifice to get the anointing, you hear people talk of 100 days of prayer and fasting, one year, two years, ten years, like Paul in the wilderness of Arabia, and so on and so forth. Now, when ministers get the anointing, listen to me, and then they also have character. When they come up, they find out that, ah, you know, People are coming. There are crowds coming because people have needs. And if you can meet that need, you become a magnet. People will keep coming. Hallelujah. They can criticize you, but they will still come. Hallelujah. Are you listening to me? But then, that's not the issue. The major issue is that when that begins to happen, now the man of God begins to talk and he tells the people, I didn't read any book. I didn't study anything. I didn't learn anything. All I did was what? I pursued God and I prayed. And out of that, I built an excellent ministry. Correct? Now, that's not wrong. Because that's how he came. But then, the danger is, if he does not contend for higher knowledge in the realm of the spirit, he will begin to model a portrait of how he got to the position he was and begin to teach people. Are you listening to me? He begins to tell people, look, all these books, they are jargons. Just forget about it. And now you have a church that is anointed. Excellent man of God, but is a bad leader. Are you listening to me? Wonderful person. But you find out that there are all kinds of cases. They don't know who keeps the offering in the church. The pastor collects 100,000 offering. He kept it in his drawer. Later he came and found 10,000. He said, who carried it? Because he does not know that there are principles of corporate financing, for instance. And he doesn't see the need for it. Are you listening to me? Now, he knows that people are coming. But he forgets that the people are human beings. Only because they want the anointing so they can stand. He said, let, let them keep standing. If they really want to be blessed. After all, in the days of Ketrin Kuman, people waited from this to this. So, certain principles, listen to me, that can prepare us to contend with our society and the 21st century is not taught and built in people. Are you listening to me? And people have been taught that when you follow certain principles of life and success and achievement and the rest, it is you are reducing your spiritual journey. So they tell people, forget it. All that is there is fast and pray. I assure you, once you can kick away Satan, your destiny will open. Now the people go through every deliverance. They pray in tongues for years and they find out that this equation is not adding up. Are you listening to me? And tonight I want to help us that there is an aspect of dominion that can only happen through excellence. Praise the Lord. Dominion through excellence. Jesus gave us a command what we call the great commission. Unfortunately, the message of the Great Commission, even by many evangelists, have been misunderstood. Because Jesus gave us a commandment. He said, go ye into all the world. You can get our teaching, conquering cosmos. The word there is cosmos. The word there is not just two people sitting down who are drinking. Go into all the social system, the strata and the sphere of society. I told you that the gospel is not just a message. The gospel is a value system. 
are you listening to me the gospel is not just a message it's an ideology it's a value system that seeks to enthrone Jesus and his principles and his culture first in your life and across every sphere of influence are you understanding me this is the gospel Jesus left when Jesus walked upon the earth he affected people and society the reason why our gospel is powerless is because number one we do not understand the great commission number two we do not understand the components that make the great commission work number three we we are not interested to pay the price and make sure that we have those components working in our lives say amen so there is a place for anointing there is a place for prayer there is a place for fasting there is a place for knowledge there is a place for wisdom there is a place for excellence there is a place for character see the truths in the bible were not supposed to substitute one another they were supposed to complement one another when you begin to substitute one truth with another you are going to land into error the truth of god's word where if it is in the bible it was not meant to substitute another it was meant to complement hallelujah so we have a society that cannot match the challenges that come and the the terrible thing about it listen to me listen to me is that many of our mentors and our fathers and our leaders and our role models have not created a true picture of leadership they have only created a true picture of pastoral ministry are you listening to me so you see someone who god is calling into the area of business behaving like a pastor because that's all he has seen and learned are you listening to me and we tell people that progress in the spirit is when you become a pastor wrong wrong god's idea was not to raise pastors i hope you understand that the fivefold ministry was not god's original agenda it came as a result of the fall of man so he had to give gifts to men ephesians 4 from verse 10 to 12. the bible says when he led captivity captive he gave gifts to men some first apostles and prophets and teachers and evangelists and pastors and they have an assignment for the equipping of the saints that they the saints will come to a point of maturity and do the work of the ministry what is the work of the ministry the great commission invade cosmos with the value system of heaven there are many christians who are born again but they have not been taught that the message that jesus brought was not a religious message he came with an ideology he came with a value system that means if you embrace jesus and his message and his principles you should become something hallelujah predictable unfortunately what we teach in church is potent enough to raise people from wheelchairs but not potent enough to produce leaders and produce champions and world changers men and women who can take charge of society so we have the church there healing the sick and raising people from crutches wonderful but go to every office you see unbelievers there in the senate unbelievers there and believers are suffering and the kingdom is not truly advancing motion without progress hallelujah and every time all we know to do is oh satan satan is behind your life if you can get this devil i promise you everything in your life will change i beg to defer that that is not completely true we preach we set people free here but let me tell you the truth sometimes many people call and say ah but they prayed for me and i don't feel those demonic influences but my life has not moved forward because you see it, success is a component of many factors impartation is only one of the components success is an equation with many variables that equal success these things have not been taught in church i told you to write four words we are going to discuss them the most dangerous of all of them is that word called indifference you know what indifference is look up please you know what indifference is 
Indifference is a state of lack of interest and non-challenge. There are many people who hear this message right now and just shut down. Say this kind of thing. I thought we were going to talk on the seven planes of entering the seven dimension in the realm of the spirit. Hold on. Hold on. Because the first shock I need you to know is that those who God is sending you to are not born again. Are you listening to me? They don't speak in tongues. They don't know the Holy Spirit. They do not respect the value system of the kingdom. And so your first interaction with cosmos will not be your praying tongues. Your first interaction will be the spirit of excellence. Write this because I want to challenge you tonight. I really want to challenge you. Indifference. I don't care. There are many believers who do not see a need. There's no pressure to upgrade their lives, to move from where they are to where God wants them to be. Indifference. The greatest killer. We preach about lust. We preach about fornication we preach about all of these things wonderful these things are bad but let me tell you we must also preach about all these other things like indifference do you know that when jesus challenged the laodicean church in revelations one of his challenge towards them was indifference he said you are neither was it the laodicean church one of the seven churches he said you are neither what hot nor how can a man be neither hot nor cold so you are standing neutral. That state of being neither hot nor cold does not mount pressure in your spirit. You are not extreme in anything. Hallelujah. So if people criticize this side, you can identify with them. If they criticize this side, you can identify with them. And that's the most comfortable position in life. Mediocrity. Indifference. Many of us are here. And when you hear messages like this, you just sit down and be wondering, is he really talking about me or some other people? Indifference. It has killed the church. We have no voice. Hallelujah. There are many people today, listen to me, who are unemployed in Nigeria, not because of Satan, because they do not understand the principles that will get them from where they are into a great place. I tell you the truth. Many people are not honest because in Nigeria, we love transferring responsibilities. It was not my fault. My stupid father took me to a herbalist. Look at where I am now. What did he do about it? Nothing. So we love it when we transfer responsibility and blame. Hallelujah. We love it when we spiritualize everything and cover for any lapse on our own part. Praise God. This is very, very important. And I get very irritated when I see people not teaching the body of Christ all of the principles that are supposed to equip them. The Bible says that the house is a come and I will show you the bride, the lamb's wife. And he took me and showed me a city and heavenly Jerusalem. He said it lieth four square. The length, the breadth, and the height were equal. In other words, there are many components that make a complete Christian. And a good preacher and a good leader must be able to expose all the people to all of those components so that there will be holistic building you don't just have prayer warriors who have broke failures in life or anoint or prosperous people who are victims of satan or anointed people who are bad fathers bad mothers you change a mind you change a man by changing his value systems his mindset hallelujah that's why wicked men like adolf hitler and all these great men they not only killed people they sought to introduce new value systems that's what they call brainwashing you know what brainwashing is 
they give you a new value system that can make you look at your blood mother who gave birth to you and you have another value system that is that does not even have respect for her value system and many of you may not realize we are there clapping and throwing people under the anointing in church and satan is infiltrating everywhere with a value system hallelujah gradually they are kicking anything that looks like god out of schools out of everything are you aware of that let me tell you the truth those who wanted to do that had that agenda since but they knew that some of them needed to become authorities in their field so that they can gain the required influence to carry out that wicked agenda and for decades they paid the price with that singular vision are you listening to me what you see happening to the world today was a decision that people set and they paid the price for years not in the body of christ we just teach people that you get born again receive the impartation and go in china today china has a dream of becoming the world superpower and let me tell you something the only person who can stop them is god are you listening to me you go and read the history of china and they came with certain leaders and the leaders began to put a new value system in the people they looked at their statistics and knew that the way chinese people were giving birth anyhow very soon the country was going to have a problem and they began to come up with measures of birth control using flamboyant advertisement that changed the mindset of people and attracting a lot of people giving them a lot of things hallelujah and then they started encouraging industrialization among their people are you listening to me they started letting them see how much a Chinese product is better than any other product in the world. And listen, they drafted strategies to put that mindset even in a little Chinese boy. A little Chinese person, although he cannot speak English, he has self-confidence more than a lot of people. A system. Hallelujah. And right now, China produces a lot of things. Many Nigerians run. And produce inferior goods and run back into the country because of a country that can believe themselves and the last time i checked forbes list of most influential men president obama was not number one because certain people have an agenda and they are pressing towards it but when you come to the church if we listen, listen to me, Christians. A great man called Matthew Ashimo Lowo, KICC, when he went to London, he found out that although we were colonized by the British, he saw that there was still that element of racism in the place. And the blacks, a lot of people, some run from Lagos, follow through bridge, follow through everywhere, not by plane. They get to London through all kinds of ways. And they survive there. They catch them. They jail them for six months. After six months, they bring them and they are roaming on the street. And he looked at these people and saw a depraved people that did not believe in themselves. And he says, I will change these people. And he set up his ministry and brought them. He began to teach them certain principles. After a few years, over seven, right now as I speak to you, over 60 to 70 percent of the people in his church own conglomerates and a lot of things the moment that happened the british government started noticing him because they started commanding influence they own the companies they own the banks they own the media and so you cannot have this kind of influence and not meet with the leaders and the kings that influence the minds of the people are you listening to me systemic invasion not just i receive i receive train people teach them give them the mindset build them i guarantee you you will fire them like the foxes that samson set on fire and left them the bible did not say he came to supervise them he just set the foxes on fire two by two and released them and the bible says they devoured the farm of the philistines Hallelujah. Are you listening to me? 
dominion through excellence lots of people do not we don't care about excellence it's not your fault you were not taught we the leaders who god has anointed have been there trying to look for money trying to look for fame trying to look for power trying to go on air trying to bring ridiculous projects that god did not send us to do and we will not concentrate he said who are these he said what is this that you see he said four horns he said these horns have risen to judge judah he said but i will send carpenters 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 what is the work of a carpenter to construct and so god sends us as carpenters and we begin to train men who will judge these horns the bible says in obadiah 21 it says and saviors shall arise out of zion and shall judge the mount of Esau. let me tell you something brothers and sisters if all you keep getting every week in koinonia is falling on the floor or hands lay, being laid on you i assure you you will hate me in the next 10 years because you will see men who didn't pray like you who didn't fast like you but you are now moving around with cvs praying in tongues for jobs in their own companies are you listening to me that's what we have in church so a lot of believers are confused they cannot understand why a man who does not love god sleeping with ladies all around but he's the one who owns virgin atlantic I didn't say that oh it's an example before you, you go and write on newspaper that joshua selman said this. no 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 example hallelujah or you find out that every believer we are just praying praying and somebody says hallelujah the lord showed me that soon we'll have a tv ministry and the man claps he said am i not a prophet shame on him what of the owner of the tv ministry who can kick your program out at any time why not train people and teach them the principles challenge and inspire people release an anointing and release knowledge and understanding in them let somebody rise and own a television station let somebody rise and and put a software that before it works it must say a scripture you must listen to it you should know me by now as you are clapping i hope you are getting it hallelujah now every time we say this thing people just say whoa but i indifference after people say they just say kai this message was very nice what are you doing about it hallelujah i don't see limits in my life i am telling you see this is my mindset i don't see limits you never, never will come and find me putting my hand like this. And you say, why? I say, Kai, I'm thinking of, I'm always optimistic. But I know whom I have believed. And I am persuaded. I'm persuaded. Look at lots of graduates in Nigeria. They love God. They were presidents of fellowships. But they were only taught the side of the anointing. Now, they go for a job interview there's nobody to lay hands on and they have to queue a long queue they were not taught principles how to how to do a lot of things they have no character they have they don't understand the principles there are many people who are who get jobs and for years they are not promoted and they get angry because they lack the necessary knowledge to leave the stage where they are and go beyond and they think the remedy is just prayer and they keep praying praying and god leads them to a book and they look they say no no this guy i know him is is not is not a fiery person let me ask you a question how has your life been so far is there anything that inspires you there are names that when you call you call names that are very nice look at the sound that we are using because of this mic many people have gotten healed many people have gotten blessed the media is streaming right now there's facebook and twitter this was somebody who believed himself enough to get up and take influence excellence at all times see 
The spirit of excellence is not about money. This is what I want you to get. A lot of people have given excuses as to why their lives are the way they are. They say, if only I had more money. Koinonia, say you are rich. That's why you can do everything. It's a spirit. It's a culture. It's an attitude. Excellence is not just about money. It's about a spirit. I know many millionaire ministers who are not excellent at all. They are anointed. They are filled with the Holy Ghost. They are not excellent. The quality of being outstanding. The quality of being thorough. Write it, thorough. Many people are not thorough in their lives. You are studying a principle. You are not thorough. We like stopping halfway. 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 We don't ask the right questions. We don't pay the price to stay long enough. We are always in a hurry. No thoroughness. That's the result. Lack of excellence. Someone wants to learn keyboard. He just learned something small. You start roaming around and telling everybody, I can play. The fact that they are not attending to you is a message. Get angry and go back. Let me tell you something. Excellence defies religion. It defies gender. It defies race and ethnicity. You meet an excellent man. He will break any barrier in life. I was listening to a speech by one brilliant lady, a Nigerian lady. Hallelujah. On KICC. And I think she's one of the editors of these great magazines. And when she was speaking, I could I, I sat down and I felt like a child. I said, Lord, I need to rise beyond this level I am. I am where I am today because of the degree of value I've placed on excellence. If I step higher, I will rise higher than this. There are many preachers. And you know, let me tell you the thing about results and excellence. Every time you keep nonchalance and you don't move forward and someone else is moving forward, you will be angry. When I drive a golf and I bring here, there are many of you who will see, you are happy because it's consoling your present position. But if I step in here with a Lincoln Navigator, people will start talking. Some of you say, ah, me, this kind of shady success, I'm not sure. We always want people to do things that keep us comfortable the moment they begin to do things that challenge you you try to find excuses see it's not every power you see that you look at oh forget about these people let me tell you something about my life and i say this with all humility i pray i fast but let me give you a bit of my personal life listen every single day every single day i do not sleep until I take out time to study on leadership, on finance, on entrepreneurship. Are you listening to me? Many people just think I'm just standing and God anointed me. Get the anointing and go. Are you listening to me? I don't do that. In my laptop right now, I have Christ Embassy Pastoral Course. The whole series. This is not even something that is given anyhow. I made sure I got it. I'm listening to it. Oga Jordan brought certain books. I ordered it right now. There are four books that I have and I must read at least between now and the next two weeks. Be the Best by Matthew Ashimolo. 10 M's of Money by Matthew Ashimolo. Pastoring Without Tears by Sondia Delaja and the Jesus He Never Knew. These were new books. When he brought John Maxwell's Five levels of leadership. I saw it. I bought it. What are you doing to leave the level you are in now and rise to become a world champion? Many of you are waiting. The day my brother rises, he will remember me. And then you'll be angry because your brother will forget you when he gets there. Say this brother, self. What is the benefit of an elder brother? Is it not to take some of us? Don't start doing something about your life. We are always waiting for somebody to pick us. When will you start carrying others? every day are you listening to me in my system right now i was given global leadership summit for last year 
2012. I have it. And I've been listening to it. Some of the brilliant Christian minds in leadership across the whole world. When I listened to the first one, I put my hand on my head. I got down on my knees. I felt ashamed of myself. I said, Joshua Selma, what have you been doing? I'm sure many of you are surprised now. That's how, that's how you'll be surprised. Me too, I'll be surprised. Them too, they are surprised when they listen to somebody else. Join the flow. Don't stand outside and be criticizing and talking. Because very soon, all you will see is dust by champions who have passed you. Are you listening to me? What do you think preaching is? Just standing to talk? Do you understand that for you to be a good preacher, there are some things you need to have? The psychology of communication? You need to know a lot of things? What do you think preaching is? Just holding a mic take. And you watch the way people will be sleeping the moment you are talking. Say after me, excellence. Very important. I need you to get this. When God told us we're starting Koinonia, we didn't just sit down while we're praying and we're fasting. What happened? We set up different departments and began to run trainings for different people. Most of the people you see today, they were not like that. A true leader does not maintain followers. He raises other leaders. We have a lot of preachers maintaining followers so that they alone will become the superstar because they are intimidated. They need to go and read books and attend courses and trainings. But they won't do it because they've surrounded themselves with mediocres that keep lying to them. Your greatest enemy is the one who encourages you to remain where you are. I don't care who that person is. My father told me something years ago. He said it's better to stay with a wise enemy than a foolish friend. Your friend loves you the way you are. He won't hurt you because he values your relationship. But your enemy will cause you to have to be smarter than him to survive. I refuse to remain where I am. I refuse. There are things I do all the time. Let me hurry up. I have so much, I have so much to share. To achieve excellence in life, you need the following, right? To achieve excellence in life, I will not be small. In the name of Jesus Christ, I have found my way out of mediocrity in life. I'm telling you, I found my way. I know it. I've seen the door. I found my way out of average. I found myself out of mediocrity. No competition. I found my way to be the best and be the greatest in life. This is not pride. This is the truth. This is what knowledge does to you. Intimidation is because you do not know your way out. For when you know what you have and when you see that door that has been set before you, you will rise up like a champion. Oh, I'll never be a failure. This is not a confession. It's the truth. I found my way out of certain things forever. Satan notwithstanding, I will live my life as if Satan does not exist. There are some battles. I wrote a, I read a beautiful book, a gift that Dr. John Akami gave me. Battles Satan cannot win. Powerful book. There are some battles that Satan has lost before he started. I believe. Hallelujah. Oh, Koinonia will keep rising. No, no. It's, no, this is not the issue of amen. The grace of God is there. And there are principles that have been tested through centuries and decades before Lord Lugard amalgamated Nigeria. It has worked. It won't break. They are irrefutable principles. This is not just the issue of prayer. So long as human beings have two legs and two hands, it will work. Kappa katabala. Thank you, Jesus. This is why I celebrate him all the time. You can stand tall through life. And you just look at people and say, just hold on. It's just a matter of time. I won't go back. I can't go back. 
to the way it used to be before your presence came and changed me I won't go back I can't go back to the way it used to be before your presence came and changed me in 2007 I was in Port Harcourt I was taking care of someone in the house where I was staying in the hospital UST the highest floor I was there suddenly I looked outside through the mirror and I was taken in the vision and I saw the international headquarters of ENI I opened my mouth I said is this on earth I saw 38 flags different nations of the world but listen I would have easily laid down and say I saw it I tell you the truth I would have died without seeing it many of you have seen many things from the day you were born how old are you now almost 40 nothing has changed every time you are stuck in life realize that it's a sign that what you know so far has ex is exhausted hallelujah dr lukoya said something one time i was listening and he said something very powerful he said that's what prof said he said you need a level of knowledge higher than you were when the problem came to conquer it are you listening to me in other words if you are in level eight and you find a problem in level eight you need knowledge higher than level eight to ever go in life there are many people who members they get to hundred members and they find out that with all the prayer and fasting they don't break that hundred member barrier they remain there so they just say that's how god wants it or forget to oh, anytime you see crowd anywhere look at the man look at his eyes very well only god knows what has happened immediately he's talking somebody will come with an anointing and set up something close to him and you will see the same people who he has been trying and begging see brothers and sisters anytime you are stuck in life don't waste your time criticizing those going ahead your criticism will not stop them join the train and get out of your present predicaments hallelujah Say, I'll never be a failure in life. Say, I'll never be small. Say it. Stop all this false humility. Say it. I refuse to be small in life. I'm telling you. I'm speaking to your spirit. Refuse it. Commit yourself to excellence. Be thorough. Be thorough. Be thorough. Don't leave your life to chance. Be thorough. What gift has God given you? The Bible says, Proverbs 31, verse 31. It says, many daughters have done well. But you, your excellence has brought you above them. It says, many daughters have done well. Many bankers have done well. Many media giants have done well. Many preachers have done well. Many businessmen have done well. It says, but you, excellence them all. See, let me tell you the truth what you see in koinonia today was my mindset of yesterday you wait and see my mindset of today what you are seeing today is not our mindset of today this is old wine i tell you the truth this is old wine this was the mindset we were preparing for when we we're at the back of chapel you hold on and see for there let me tell you god is alert and active watching over his word He's watching obedient people. When God announced to us that this is a year of supernatural exploit, I knew that it's not enough to just say, thank you, Lord. I began to say, Lord, what are the things I need? It means I need a higher level of information. Oh boy, I wish I had time. All right, very quickly. I really wish I had time. But so, let's just get something. To achieve excellence in life, you need the following. Please make sure you are writing. Are you getting blessed tonight? Number one. When God wants to bring you into a life of excellence, the first thing you need is exposure. Write exposure. Exposure. 
Let me tell you something about the power of exposure. Look up. If you are not exposed to something higher than what your mind knows, your mind can paint the portrait of a world of mediocrity and leave you there. Hallelujah. I was in secondary school. Our secondary school is not like your own. The one you went to. Where you ate yam and chicken. I never ate chicken in secondary school. Just one, Hanagama. I never ate chicken. Hallelujah. Not once. But, listen, but, we were local champions around our local government. I mean, if we came to do debate with your school, you are, you are gone. Just start crying. Hallelujah. We had a debate with Jake's school. We came and came them those times. Ah, it was a delightsome experience. Ladies looked at us. They are ladies. We were winning those times. But we remained at that level until we met another school. Exposure. Say after me, exposure. God will expose you to something. Listen. Exposure, those three, those three things. Number one, the power of exposure. One, it takes you beyond your present horizon. It shows you that there is something higher than what you have seen. Exposure challenges you. Exposure provokes you. Sometimes, exposure embarrasses you. And these are all tools that God uses to show you that there is a need to step up in life. Hallelujah. Exposure. For instance, you never knew there's one song, um, ah, I didn't know you will answer me this way. Hold on. That's a lovely song. I said that to say this. That I just remember the story. I went for administration some years ago and we're just trusting God. It was an awesome opportunity to get to, even if it's 10 people. And it was wonderful. And I went there and the people treated me so well. And then, they are, it was a youth meeting then, but they are, or God, they are prophet or they are bishop or something. He said he wanted to have dinner with me. So you know in my mind, what is dinner? What is dinner? What have you been eating as dinner? Two or something or this and that and that. So I went, was smart. When I got there and I, I saw what was there. I, I first didn't know what to do. Because I wanted to behave myself. I preached a powerful message. I didn't want to just disgrace and cancel everything. That I was looking for everything that can keep up my reputation at that point. So I sat down. And I saw things I didn't know what they were. I saw a pack. I didn't know it was milk inside. You, we only know milk in tin. Correct? You are laughing. Which one have you seen? So I didn't know it was liquid milk inside. And I behaved myself. I already made up my mind to be humble. So I was ready to ask questions. I had learned more than what you don't know. Just ask. Don't try to disgrace yourself the more. Ask. So I sat down and uh, I diplomatically cracked a joke and we started talking. And then I sat down there and I knew that I didn't know this thing. So I assumed that I was, the only thing I could do was to just behave like I was in the spirit. No, they won't ask you too many questions. So I was behaving. And I was watching what they were doing. I learned numerous lessons when I was watching. I was seeing everything. I would have fumbled, disgraced myself, disgraced E and I, left a bad reputation. When I saw that thing, what happened? Say after me, exposure. Say it, exposure. I said, Lord, thank you that it happened with just three or four people. When I went back, I sat down on my laptop. I browsed everything about table etiquette, kinds of food, how to behave, courses of meal and everything. 
Because I'm making way for the blessing. You know, the more you rise, the more you implicate yourself. People expect that you should have done certain homeworks. So they just... Some of you will get somewhere. You enter someone's house. You just see two toilets. You just think it's for you to choose anyone. You don't know what it's for. Don't pretend you didn't have it. Ask questions. Not just, ah, the type in our house is green. You don't know what it's for. Say after me, exposure. Don't be ashamed. Say exposure. Many of you, when you came into this school, ladies, you know what you used to wrap around yourself. You didn't know that the society was this sensitive. You just wrap everything and put your head around. But with time, you began to study other people. You say, ah, this is not good for me. And what happened? It was a secret exposure. You didn't tell anybody. The first day you cooked, you ate it alone. All your friends were saying, Kai, you tried, oh, this is nice. Everybody left you and your food there. For some of you, from that time till now, you have been living in deceit. May God take you to see somebody's food that will provoke you not to rest till you go for catering. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Say after me, exposure. Prepare. Look up, please. I'm teaching you how to adopt the spirit of excellence. You prepare. Sir, let me have this cup. Why did they do this? How many of you know? Don't pretend. How many of you know why this was done? You've never cared to ask? Why? Did, when did they start doing this? Hallelujah. One day now, you now say you want to be a virtuous lady. They'll say, sister, please come. There are some white people who just came from somewhere. And I hear you attend Koinonia. You, you are a disciplined lady. I mean, all the rest run around. Please help us. Just set the table and make sure you make everything. And you are sweating around. Set the table. Oh, God. The Bible says you are the one who will do it. Now I'm the one who is doing it. Thank you, sir. And you disgrace... You disgrace yourself and your family. Hallelujah. Many of you keep disgracing yourselves and disgracing people. You know why? Shame will never leave your life until you adopt the spirit of excellence. Hallelujah. You saw that a new design came out. You didn't ask all the questions how they wear it. You went, your money only reached for one part of the dressing. You carried it, wore it, and you were just coming around and smiling, looking at yourself, almost hitting yourself. Exposure. Say after me, exposure. It's not your fault. You came from the village. It's not your fault. It's not your fault. You have been lying as if you are living in Ikoi, Lagos. Humble yourself. Embrace the exposure and leave that realm. Leave that realm. They bring something for you. You don't know whether it's rice or it's chicken. And it's just keep quiet. You say, ah, but uh, there's turkey. They say, no, no, it's not turkey. It's, it's fish. You say, ah, I forgot. See me again. Now, you are tongue talking. You are tongue talking. You are anointed. Do you think if I'm a director and I want to employ you, I will employ you to go and disgrace my company? No way. No way. And you say, somebody in your village. Whereas somebody who is not born again, not filled with the Holy Spirit, but pays the price to learn some things. You are going for a job interview. You are, you are dressing as if you are going to watch football. You are seeing everybody dressing smart. And you will just throw, say, the most important thing is the anointing I have. You enter the place, they say, why are you like this? This is how you want to become a staff? Are you aware this is a bank? Or this is an insurance company? You say, yes, I'm aware. You are, you are now getting arrogant because you think you are standing in front of Koinonia. You just imagine that is your church. What is all this now? They've taught you positive confession. You are now shouting, the people say, please, this way. Walk out of this place. We don't like this kind of people. Walk out of this place. Hallelujah. 
Many of you do not want to train yourself. You don't want to build yourself. You have been taught that knowledge is inferior. The most important thing is just the anointing. I'm teaching you today that excellence will take you out of where you are into a world that you have never imagined. Please, let's hurry up. Thank you, Jesus. So you need what? Say, Lord, expose me. It could be an illumination in the world that you have never seen. And God exposes you. It could be a program. It could be whatever that opens you up. Exposure. This is a beautiful design by our decorations department. Appreciate them. Exposure. Because when you become a champion, you will know how to celebrate people. Appreciate them, please. Hallelujah. You go for a meeting somewhere, they say, this is a professor. Everybody is clapping you. You are sitting down. They'll say, sorry, please, can you? They will lead you outside as if they want to ask you a question and close the door. They are videotaping it. They want to show the world that there is a way. See, listen, it's called the law of protocol. Protocol. Learn these things. Learn it. Learn it. Learn it. Don't say it does not matter. How old are you that you are saying it does not matter? Those who have been practicing it have lived by it. I hope you are receiving something tonight. I hope you are not just laughing. Because me, I'm serious about what I'm saying. It must not be a negative exposure. There are negative exposures. For instance, you see a lady who is a prostitute, dresses one kind. And she comes and you are there seated. And many guys are just coming. You say, all right. So this is what guys want. That's it. You go back. You know how Nigerian films are. The next thing they show, the villager girl just comes out. Say, how do I look? They say, this is it. And then the men begin to come. That's negative exposure. Positive exposure will inspire you. Are you listening to me? It won't kill your destiny. It will inspire you. Many of you are mentoring the lives of people who are not born again. They are not serious. They are not using principles that are consistent with the word of God. You will become like them and you will go to hell at the end. So stop that. Everything we are discussing has to be within the jurisdiction of the principles of the kingdom. So number one, you need exposure. Number two, exposure will create a need in you. To rise higher and this leads to the next point determination because of the pain of the embarrassment you had you will vow a vow that nobody needs to supervise you tell yourself it will never happen again i was told one day that there are some guys young guys are like claiming as in this kind you know young guys when they see an elderly woman they like claiming look i'm responsible i can take care of your daughter and so the, the car had a problem and they asked them, the woman was inside and they wanted to jump start it. So the guys were pushing. The woman was tired. She said, ah, you poor young men, sorry, some of you enter and none of them could drive. And they had been behaving as in, we are ready to take care of your daughter. The woman said, confidently, say, please, enter and help me, you know, an old woman I've tried. And the guys were sweating there. Yeah. Oh boy, you shall be drive the other one. I said, no, you go. If I ask you why can't, why can't you drive? You say because a car has not come. That's called mediocrity. Favor is when preparation meets opportunity. Sister, what can you cook? Jollof rice and boiled yam. What else? Nothing else. Who do you want to marry? Pastor. And kill him. And kill him. What if he fasts for seven days? That's what you plan to give him? And the guy has not come and said, Lord, I'm warning you now. Uh-uh. Oh, oh. Stop warning God. Get back. Create exposure. And have a determination to move ahead. You have a restaurant. Nobody has come to eat. You didn't ask why. You went for prayer. Now they prayed for you. Nothing changed. 
is the rice that is overnight. By 1 p.m., you are still selling yesterday's rice. I will never come and eat in your restaurant. Whether you are a member of Koinonia, it doesn't matter what department you are functioning. I won't come and eat because I have only one body and I need to take care of it. If you are not ready to step up and then we say we are looking for caterers to cook for the ministers, you say I'm available. Available. Music artist. I was listening to a lady today. Top sticks, they call her. Ah, I put my hand on my head. Do you know her? How many of you know her? Yet you see, I'm a drummer. Say, I saw myself in the dream playing drums. Don't just let dreams deceive you, it takes action to bring what you have seen in the realm of the spirit to manifest in this realm. Am I challenging you? I watched this lady. I put my hand on my head. I wanted us to play it. It would have challenged you, sisters. There is no excellent person who is not prosperous and fulfilled because it would defy barriers. The same way some people are begging for jobs. Certain people... See, I learned a lesson in life. I'm still coming back for banks. Banks, I'm coming back for you in the future. I applied for a loan in 2008. The banks did this. They looked at me, looked at me, sized me and, and drove me out. I said, no problem. A day will come. It will be members of Koinonia that will have that bank. That, that, that was no Koinonia then, E and I. When they have it, I can walk in. There's what we call human capital, not land. You are the capital. So I said, if I don't have land, I will become the capital. Get knowledge. Get wisdom. Become equal to a nation. One man. Pastor Tunde Bakare was preaching. A bank abroad called him and they were begging him. They said, please collect a loan of $10 million. They were begging him. He said, what for? He said, please just take it. They said, because they are afraid of the recession. So they are looking for human beings that control influence. So that they will collect loan. So it can keep the bank stable. Are you listening to me? So people like Adeboy and the rest now, if he comes for loan, he's equal. Look at redeem. Can they make one bank? Or how many banks? So they'll say, please, Papa, collect money from us. Some of us are begging and say, give us money. Wait, wait. Uh, you have to present this and that. I said, no problem. It's not your fault. I don't have land, but I can have what? I said, I'm coming. This is the right thing you will do this thing for. This one that you do. I'm coming back. And I said, a day will come. On my table will be many offers from banks. I said, the problem is that we are blessed. Let me just pray for you. Is it not increase you want? Oh, it will happen. It will happen. It will happen. <laughs> knowledge, knowledge, knowledge. I found my way to the top. It will happen. It will happen. A day will come. I will ask. See, some of you one day will sit down. If you take what I'm saying serious, you say, Mommy, do you want a bungalow? Matuashimolo, hog bread in this area. The road you follow to come for Koinonia. He put bread on his head. Buy bread. Buy bread. He was hogging it. Some of our parents were laughing at him. Now he's a world champion. What takes a man from a bread? He came to Zaria. He has a house. He still has a house there. When he came in, he said they should build the house and in 30 days they completed it plus polishing. Why wouldn't they build it when the money is there? Some of our parents have been building since 1991. Just four bedroom flat. Till today, we have not completed it. Everybody you thought was stopping the building has died. Yet the building has not increased. Now, let's visit that word I wrote. Change. Change. Help us, Holy Spirit. Change. Remember the word? Let's visit it today. When you are determined to succeed, 
That means you are determined to change some things about your life. The difference between the rich and the poor is not money. It's their habits, their mindsets. The difference between those that God uses mightily and those who grumble and criticize and scrabble over others is their mindsets. And I want you to live where you are today and rise. There's always backbiting. There's nothing called frontbiting. Backbiting is for those who are far behind, who are looking for an excuse for why they are where they are. Change. Listen. There are a few things I've seen that happen to people every time you hear the word like this. I wrote reactions that forerun change. Number one, refusal or denial or indifference about your present situation. That means why you need to remain there. There are many of us, when you hear a word like this, it will embarrass you, it will sting your ego. That's what is happening to many of us. You are angry, you wish you can flog me. That's why you are not sitting here. And now you are just saying, oh God, this guy, why is he saying this thing now? There are many people who hear messages like this and get angry. They don't know why they are angry. They think they are angry at the man of God. They are not angry at the man of God. It's a reaction that is compelling change. Because when you hear a message like that, it rattles you. And you can either be meek and broken or you can stand and give excuses and say, okay, forget it, Jare. So the first thing people do when they are confronted with change is to refuse it. They try to give excuses. They try to be indifferent and say, well, I've had the time will tell who is right. Me, I'll keep my prayer. I won't let anybody preach any nonsense. Time will tell. <laughs> you better repent now. You don't need to wait till the future. Just look. Look at two people. One who looks like you and one who looks like what we are preaching. Project them and see what is happening to their lives. Experience. People say it's the best teacher, but it must not be your experience. Be wise enough and look at other people. For instance, our family members. I know families that conduct vigils every Thursday and Friday in their house. They wake everybody. Some of your families do that. The moment you see people waking, know that your father is under pressure. Something is wrong. Wake up and come out. We have a problem and you are sleeping there. Come out. And you are praying and you are sleeping. You are saying, Lord, is this really the solution to this problem? Because your father cannot sleep. You will sleep too. Growing up, when my father is annoyed, everybody must partake of that annoyance directly. For something very small like keeping this Bible here. You say, is this where it's supposed to be? You know that the real thing is not the Bible. There's, it's a cumulative of something. You watch your friend on news. You just start getting angry. And see all these people. They now pretend as if they don't know us. The truth is he has forgotten about you. Let me just tell you the truth. Because they don't look back. Leaders look forward. So if you ever want people to remember you, come forward. Many of you are there angry. They don't remember us. Uh -uh. You want them to just turn back like that? So that they will fail and then you say, Hey, I knew it won't last. That's indifference. If it works well, you say, I knew. It's just that I didn't say it. If it fails, you say, Shebi, I, I told you I'd be indifference. <laughs> After you refuse then it leads to anger and embarrassment. That's the second stage. Because right now you are, that anger and embarrassment is a confrontation in your heart. You are knowing, you are knowing right now that this is true. I need to change. So you are either getting angry at the vessel or you are getting angry at your situation. Number three, the moment you finally settle it, that where I am is not good enough. What happens? The third thing is you begin to negotiate for cheap routes so that you escape fast, so that people will not know. Cheap routes. Unfortunately, there are no cheap routes in life. It's only in advertisement. I have one, this thing on my phone. It said, marriage, instant, no dues. So he wrote, he said, there's no marriage, instant, no dues. It's in America, they do that. 
Oh, I love you. You love me. Let's marry. They just get one priest from somewhere. Just comes out from somewhere and just join the people. Two weeks later, you look at them and say, how are you? Say, I'm not doing it again. He doesn't love me. Oh, I don't love you. What, did, what were you thinking? What were you thinking? When your mother was getting married in the village, she knew she was in for it. She was determined to make it work. We're not touching those areas now. Ah, one day we'll talk about it. You've not heard me preach about it for a long time. I went to Delta and when they were picking me for the state conference from my hotel room, the two guys were arguing. They said, sir, want to find out your opinion about marriage. I said, ah, don't start. Because I said, you people don't want to know my opinion. My opinion about many things is always causing trouble. So a day will come, we'll share that one. Praise God. I'm sure that day some of you will just stand up and say, Phew, just walk away. <laughs> Negotiating for cheap alternatives. Cheap alternatives. If that does not work, then you come to terms with the fact that change is inevitable. In other words, you cannot hide it. You may cry about it. You may feel embarrassed about it. But you have to change. At that point, it will bring you to a point where you are humble. And you will receive and say, okay, I'm wrong. I need to change. Listen, do you know how hard it is for people to accept change in their lives? Because change means you have to admit that what you know is not enough. That's why humility is the fastest tool to receive change. Once you are humble, you can embrace change. Hallelujah. Have you seen someone in class who bragged about one test? The guy bragged and said, if I don't pass, change my name. And then, maybe it's just one question. So you either get 10 over 10 or 0. And they were calling the names of those who are 10 over 10 and his name was not there. And then the guy just sat down and everybody's looking at him. And the guy is trying to manage multiple pressures, not knowing what to do. And then they say, who can help us solve it? And then the guy wants to quickly stand up and go and solve it. He said, oh, I know the right thing. And when he stands up, he says, no, 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 you got 0, please sit down. They will keep embarrassing you till you come to a point where you say, all right, I am a brilliant student, but I didn't get this right. See, have meekness and humility. It will help you embrace change. Are you listening to me? Meekness and what? Humility. There are people today in the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. God has opened them up to a revelation. But changing it may mean changing the ideology of the ministry. They would rather remain like that than to contend for truth. Is that true? Some of your churches are like that. The founders, the overseers, whoever, God has given them encounters and are saying this gospel you are preaching, you need to change it. Something is wrong. And they look at the reputation they have built for decades and say, Kai, if I change this thing now, it's as good as dying. Hallelujah. Or your father beats your mother. Two of them do and go and they go to church. And then a man of God with big mouth like me comes and says, there are men in this place. You beat your wife this morning before coming. And he said, say, turn to your wife and say, I'm sorry. And you see your father struggling with change, battling with change, doing suddenly like he's sending a text message. Or oh God, turn to your wife and say, I'm sorry. Just battling. That's why I taught you these virtues last week. I'm sorry. Remember? Please. What else? Thank you. You came for koinonia and you matched somebody. The person says, sister, you matched me. You just turn and look at him and say, is it where they keep Bibles? Why don't you change? Change is very hard. This is what kept, this is what kept Nitel out of the way. If your father works in Nitel, I'm sorry. But this is what took them out. The ability to embrace change will always keep you in season. Hallelujah. Many people have refused to change. And now they are victims. Let's hurry up. Number three. 
All those things I've said are number two. To achieve excellence in life, one, you need exposure. Two, determination to succeed. That's where we spoke about change. Number three, set goals. Set goals on what you want to become like. Set a high standard. If you tell me you want to become excellence, I'll say like who or what. Give me a reference. You must have a reference. A reference is someone or something that have become close or equal to what you want to become like. You must have somebody or somewhere you are looking up to. Set a very high standard. Set a clear standard. I want to be an entrepreneur. What kind? Like who? Call the name of one person who can give us a portrait of what you want to become like. Those in the world know that. Ask them who is your role model. They just say Timaya. Ask a small child. I mean, at least they have an idea. You know what that means? Go to their rooms and all you see is Timaya's tapes and everything. Because they want to follow the principles he followed to get there. Ask believers. You say you are an artist. Say wonderful. So tell me three people that really inspire you that you want to become like. Say me, oh, the way I do my things, even me, I'm not sure. We just keep moving. You will never, never become the kind of figure that you are seeing. I assure you. I assure you. Unfortunately, and I must say this now, many pastors have taught people that if I am your pastor or I am your spiritual father, I'm the only one you should listen to. Don't listen to anybody. Don't take anybody. Question, you want to become a media giant. Your pastor is only a preacher. How is he going to mentor you into that? He can guide you. He can instruct you. He can advise you. But you need to find a mentor along the area that God is taking you to. This is the message they don't preach in church. Because people always think, oh, if you are my son or you are my daughter, it means your offering is coming to me alone. Get that junk out of the church. That's what is keeping people where they are. He looks popular, but he did not come from God. He doesn't produce successful people. You want to own an airline. Like which one? You don't know. I assure you, you won't arrive. I watched one cartoon growing up called Alice in Wonderland. Fantasies that happen in one Wonderland. That's how many people are living. <laughs> you ask them, they, start, they even close their eyes when they are telling you. You won't get there. Look at me. I want to ask two people randomly. Brother, stand up. You, stand up. What do you want to become in life? Don't shout. Come and tell me. Don't, don't need to tell everybody none of their business. Alright, this is why you are here. May God bless you for your honesty. Are you seeing that? He said an answer that many of you will not have courage to say. Because you sit down and act like you know. How about you, sir? Okay. I want to be a solution. To you want to be a solution to the world? Ick. No, no, don't laugh. Hold on. This is a school. You want to be a solution to the world. That's wonderful. What solution? A medical doctor is a solution. A carpenter is a solution. A mechanic is a solution. A banker is a solution. In what area? Biochemistry. In biochemistry. So you want to take that field. God bless you. You see now that what you see what you are receiving in this place, guidance. So go and find a God-fearing biochemist. Are you listening to me? How do you get that? Go and Google it. Christian professional biochemists. Look for them. You find a particular biochemist. He has probably written books. He probably has videos on YouTube. Go to engineering faculty in the night. Pay the price and download it. And start listening. You will get their mindsets. Before you know it, you will rise above ABU. Rise above Zaria. In my mind, I've left Zaria. In my mind, I've left Nigeria. I, I never will be limited with this environment. Hallelujah. Are you learning something now? So, write it. Find somebody. Say, who do you want to become? Say, an apostle. Like who? What, is it God, what did God tell you? You are not clear. Go back. Stop going out. Go back to the secret place. There are questions to ask. But you left an incomplete session and you got up and you are running. There are many ministries today 
ask me what every time we hold leadership meetings whether ministers meetings whether um, um, HODs or ESCOs or whatever the f we discuss it I tell them why this ministry exists in one sentence I can tell you what we are here to do periodically I remind all the leaders we are not existing to do everything there are many preachers go and ask them why did you start your church say well an angel appeared it was on the 20 why did you start your church say the angel told me say now this day i have commission why did you start your church little wonder people are committed in your church they come and go because there is no definition of vision they don't know what they are going to become why did you start your church now you started a prayer group even if it started supernaturally eventually you go and ask God he said now Lord people are coming in this prayer group where are we going to you are just praying with a sister praying with a sister where are you going to do you like her are you starting the ministry together are you prayer partners vision define it we'll be praying every day and the sister is saying so what's the next instruction God is giving you are saying let's just keep praying where are you going nobody follows a leader that does not have conviction and where you are going I assure you so set goals set goals in the area of finances there are people that I model their lives in the area of ministry there are people I model their lives in the area of leadership there are people I plan to be higher when you go to my place you see above my television I put my picture there people think it's just for entertainment no it's prophetic because I'm seeing it, I'm saying whatever I see on this television, the hand of God will take me above it. And then you see books there. Some of you, when we get there, it's just dreams you write. Wishes, useless wishes that may never come to pass. The only goal you have is the kind of man you want to marry. That's good, but that's not enough. You even draw the person. His eyelashes must be wide and rich here. Apply that same principle for your life and destiny. Or the brother, she must be this. Me, I won't take anything. Joshua Selman has taught us excellence. I won't take anything. Then you too, you better work to match the excellence you want. There are many brothers here. You want a beautiful sister. Every time you come, you just look at her. Just turn, worship team. You are just looking you are not organized you are not well behaved you are not well cultured you are not disciplined you have no vision you are not doing anything about your life they say who do you want one day you even meet your friend and say Kai, i've been thinking about something you better stop thinking you better stop thinking quick and, and get to what you are doing you better stop thinking don't punish your mind for nothing stop thinking First things first. Stop thinking. Clarity. Say after me, I receive grace to set definite goals for my life. Write a quick assignment you do. Write three, go and look for three people that represent the areas. They must be believers. They must be believers. Three people that give a picture of what you know God wants you to do. Whether in ministry, not very high. Raise your standard high. If you want to own a TV ministry, like which one? For instance, you can say like TBN, like God TV, like KICC, for instance. You say, God has told me this, my hand will count money. There's one song. You see this, my hand, you... Many people even count it. You go count dollars. You would dance that thing and never count any dollar. It's wonderful. Do the motions of the church. Motivate yourself. But after that, go and sit down. You didn't even mention Naira. Mention dollars. Hallelujah. Set a standard. When I look at ministry, there are people that inspire me. 
I read their books. It doesn't mean you will receive everything. There will be excesses here and there in their lives. Jump all those things and concentrate on what you can get. Are you listening to me? There are many people whose mindsets in certain areas I don't quite agree with. Stop criticizing. Just get what you can get and go. Hallelujah. Set goals. So that you can know when you set goals, you must begin to put pressure on yourself to achieve those goals. Don't just set blind goals. Set goals. There are ministries that we, as a ministry, I've, I've taught, I carried the heads of department, the ministers, and we went to Koza Abuja. Why? Because I love and I respect their excellence. Do you know it takes a lot of humility to do that? Because I'm not failing in ministry. I know I'm anointed. But you must humble yourself. I'm saying it openly because it's not a thing to hide. There are many ministers that listen to my messages and just stand up and pretend. They, I know it. I see it sometimes in visions. See, celebrate greatness when you enter its presence. There are people who bless my life. I don't hide it. And we took all the leaders and we went to Koza. We went in the morning. We sat down there. Our head of department of different departments went to their head of departments and they were learning don't ask questions why we are excellent and this is not this is old wine i'm telling you this is old wine you wait and see what god is doing they have adopted principles for instance i know that ilorin and ibadan is the place of music people is that true some of you musicians don't even know you think it's, it's samaru that's the problem. Come. He was over at my place today and I was doing discussions with him. It was him that told me about the lady. How many of you like his singing? Ilorin people again. You see that? And I was, I was asking him a question. I said, tell me about the music in Ilorin. And he said, ah, the people there, most of them like money, 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 but they are excellent. They are competent. I said, ah. I said, tell me more. And I was just listening. He said, tell me more. I said, all right, God bless you. Every time I challenge the decoration department, they don't just bring some of these designs off heart. They sit down and look at certain things. The protocol, almost every department. And if you're a head of department here and you don't have an idea of any ministry that does your department, and an idea of a picture, it means you are misleading your people. You do anything you want to do today. You do, thank God there are ministers there to supervise you. When you are going out, of course, it's our job to bring you back. Question, who inspires you? Yourself. That's why you are still where you are. You are the only one who inspires yourself. You don't have any figure that inspires you. Out of the many mentors in my life, my greatest mentor is Jesus Christ. And I, no, 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 I know many of you will not. Jesus inspires me. Boy, when I study the Bible, sometimes I just put it on my head. I say, Baba Jesus. I just laugh. I mean, this guy was something else. He inspires me. Who inspires you? Show me the person that inspires you and I'll tell you why you are in your life. For many of us, we are surrounded by people who are failures in life. It doesn't mean you should hate them, but they cannot be your role models. It's out of pity many of us look up to some people. I won't let a failure inspire me. I won't criticize him. I will love him. But I know he will not help me to get where I want to go to. There are many of you who are friends with people who don't inspire you. It's just out of pity. We have been there since secondary school. You want to read. After you read for two hours, you say, I beg, Jare, Jesus is coming soon. You say, not true. You just close your book. And you keep getting zeros, 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 zeros. And you'll be wondering, zeros. The best student in your class is reading. You go and sleep and come back and still see the person reading. Because every time he's tired, he sees, did you have that kind of thing in secondary school? Where you have the best two students. When somebody's tired, he looks at the person who took first last semester. See, I'm not going anywhere. We must read together. 
provoke one another. I'm not teaching you to have a competitive spirit, but you must. Who challenges you? I don't mean makes you envious. Challenges you. I taught the worship team one time. I told them, I said, acknowledge those who are better than you. Hallelujah. Acknowledge it. When you look and say, Selena can hold this camera. If I hold this camera and you watch the video, you will stone me. Hallelujah. I wasn't trained to do it. When they were being trained, I was doing something else. So I'm not that competent. So if I come and see Selena and say, oh, well, is it not this simple thing? Mm -mm. Celebrate greatness when you see it. Hallelujah. You will now see these worship people and say, ah, ah, I thought this lady is a new lady. She came, ah, ah, worship team have accepted her. They are trying. No, why didn't they take you? You see, people have this negative, critical spirit. Hallelujah. Why are the protocol people standing and wearing white? Can't they just dress anyhow? Don't communicate your frustrations looking at things around. Calm down, get the word and change. Let me tell you something. 95% of people who criticize only criticize because they desire to be in that position that they are criticizing. It's a bad spirit in Nigeria. They've been insulting good luck Jonathan and they've been doing a lot of things. People have been swearing, if we see you, kill. he has been in Meduguri and Yola for the past two days. Nobody did anything. Everybody was shouting, hey, the same people. What are we saying? Who is deceiving who? Four, pay the price for new information. You need new information to rise to a new level. You need new information. What you have is good, but it's not enough. Hear me. You are a book writer. You wrote your book. It's only you and your family members that know. That tells you that your information is insufficient. You launched it in your church. They piled the book for you there. Now you are giving it as donation because nobody will buy it. You were not ready. You just followed one foolish motivation that you cannot explain and wrote books that don't have head and sense. Later on, after two years, you read them and saw nonsense that you wrote. Principles that don't work. They are not even work. The best time to begin to bring people into some things is when you become the epistle of your message. At that point, nobody can contend it. If I tell you that spitting on people's face is bringing miracles, I tell you the truth, if I can prove it, you will be surprised to see how people will believe it. There are many people talking things they cannot prove. I learned this early enough. So I made sure that I'm the guinea pig. There are many things today I'm saying. You people are believing it only because you have seen we have become epistles of some of these things to a measure. Otherwise, you will not believe it. Pay the price for new information. Get books. Get books. The Bible says, buy the truth. Borrow vessels. You may not borrow oil, but you can borrow vessels. Get books. Or God Jordan is here. There are books outside, I believe. Buy them. Buy books. Study. Go for knowledge. Respect knowledge. Respect knowledge. Intellect is not everything. But I'm telling you, respect the power of a transformed mind. Respect knowledge. Don't criticize it. Respect knowledge. Go for new information. Meet people who know. Humble yourself. Get tapes. Koinonia messages are here. Many of you have been suffering certain things that the solution has been preached in these messages. Listen to it. Again and again. Sit down with books and tapes and challenge yourself that you are going to change your life. Not just sermons. Books by people who have proven track record. Number five, apply these principles diligently. Apply them. The end of every knowledge is application. Whatever you do not apply cannot help you. 
I'm telling you this. Many of us know so many things, but we refuse to apply them. The most dangerous thing that can happen to a man is to have knowledge without application. There are many people holding all kinds of seminars around Nigeria. Success motivation. And you see the person comes rickety, not motivated, bad, terrible, battered, and he just drops and says, there are three Ds. Determination, dedication, diligence. Look at the person who is talking. Say, you must be determined. This guy is weary already. There were four people who came. He thought 100 people would come. Say, determination, diligence. And the person is already weary. Go back to your secret place. Apply the new information diligently. Number six, be disciplined and consistent in practicing the new principles. Many people lack discipline. It takes discipline to keep practicing these principles. Even if the result is not showing now, you have been tightened. The result is not showing now. You've been reading books. That continue, continue, don't stop. Pastor Chris will say, keep saying it. Don't stop talking it. Let me add to it. Keep doing it. Don't stop doing it. No matter what the, you are praying every day, you are studying your Bible, you are reading books on leadership, you are fine-tuning, you believe that you are going to have one of the biggest catering firm in Nigeria. Now you have certain people who are some of the top caterers. You are following them and you are taking it diligent. You are practicing some principles. It looks like it's not working. Continue. Give yourself wholly to them. I promise you, opportunity will come and your preparation will more than pay for it. Hallelujah. Be consistent. Be disciplined. Many of us are not disciplined. It takes discipline to maintain a consistent prayer life. It takes discipline to maintain a consistent word life. Because sometimes you are tired. Sometimes when is my time to follow materials on leadership and all of these things, I'm tired. I'm really tired. Physically exhausted. I may have spent the whole day counseling. But sometimes when I lie down, I remember that I have people to lead. I think about you. And it inspires me. I get up. Sometimes I literally crawl. I'm telling you with my knees. I put on my laptop. I said, eyes, you can sleep. But my head, stay awake. And I keep following it. I just get a drink or something. And I force myself. Listen, you must let your body know it's not in control of your destiny. Be consistent. Be disciplined. It's your time to study. You are studying a book. Your friend says, come. There's one, there's one uh, powerful program. Or one man of God has come to town. Wonderful. As great as that is. Ask yourself a question. Is the program you are going to, going to help you to achieve your vision? If it will not, you better sit down and continue doing what you are doing. Be consistent. Say, I receive grace to be disciplined. Discipline is doing the same thing whether the condition is favorable or not. That's discipline. Force yourself. Constrain yourself. My body is already used to me. I can come back from a trip. When I come back from a trip, I know that it's time to do some things. I'm tired and I'm exhausted. I rest though. Don't get me wrong. I have days that I pay that debt but I pay it at the right time. When I need to do something, my body is not going to stop me. There are many of you, you have slept away your destiny. You have slept away a realm that you would have got into. You sleep as if it's a demonic attack. The moment you hold the book, you are drowsy. But when you are gisting, when you are lying, have a... Number eight, never give up. Never give up give up. We are going to pray right now. Never give up. Never. No matter what happens. 
no matter what happens champions are those who survive what others cannot survive never give up say after me i'll never give up never give up i'm imparting this word in someone's spirit tonight never give up those who succeed in life are those who ride against the odd samson's eyes was removed but he still held on to the pillars he said it's not too late I'm speaking to someone tonight. The devil has spoken to you. Hear me, some of you are outside and you've written certain exams and the devil is telling you your life is over. I bring you a prophetic word. Never give up. I don't care what happened, what, what your CGPA is. I, some of you may have made costly mistakes and you've lost certain things. You were not born again. You slept around. Whatever it is, never give up. You can always start again. Listen. The problem in life is not how fast or slow you are moving. It's that you are not moving at all. That's when it becomes a problem. Because in the ark of Noah, the cheetah entered and the snail too got into the ark. No matter how slow, tell yourself I will continue. Job said, all the days of my appointed time I will wait. For if your strength fails you in the day of battle, the Bible says your strength. I've read the story of CEOs of companies. Oh, you cannot imagine what those people have gone through. I've read the story of preachers that have mega churches. You cannot imagine the persecutions that these men survived. There is nothing you are going through in your life that you cannot conquer if you can keep at it. Many, many of our fathers they would have been successful businessmen today if they did not give up. They started a business together with their friends. On the way, what happened? Maybe the tanker capsized and they lost the foil. And the friend said, I will continue. Now he owns an oil well and your father is coming to beg him and say, Amos, remember. I want to take you out of the life of a beggar and make you a leader and a champion forever and i curse every pronouncement upon your life i curse every tongue i curse everything that we want to stop you from sharing this word tonight and rising into a glorious destiny i call your spirit into a higher level of grace i call your spirit into a higher level of glory i prophesy and i speak According to the measure of grace that God has granted, you will rise from where you are. In the name of Jesus, academically, I call you, rise above and beyond this level. Dominion. Listen, there is fulfillment when you embrace a life of excellence. When you refuse to stop where you are. Where you refuse to stop Many of you may need to go and take some extra courses to prepare you for where God is taking you. Many of you will need to get some books, go to catering school, go to media schools. Many of you may need to follow, buy magazines, buy what will help you. Go for knowledge. There's no time to waste. Your generation is waiting. Buy tapes of musicians, buy tapes of drummers, bass guitarists. Get it. I'm telling you, get it. It will change your life. Stop playing around with your destiny. Get it. I'm telling you this from the depth of my heart. You will never be a failure if you follow these principles. Rise up on your feet and let's pray. Lift your hands and bless the Lord. And say, I found my way out of mediocrity in life. I found my way. Lift your hands inside and outside. Say, Lord, thank you for your word. I found my way. I'm a champion. My background notwithstanding. My present situation notwithstanding. Pray. Say I go for knowledge. I go for knowledge. I'm excellent in everything that I do. I'm excellent. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So adopt that spirit of excellence. Go back to your room. Go and wash all those dirty and scattered plates that you have left for months, for weeks. 
Hallelujah. No, I need to talk to you. Hallelujah. There are guys, you wear inner shirts, inner wears for weeks, for months. You don't wash it. You don't care. You carry one shirt. It's smelling sweat. You adopt the spirit of excellence. Get out of that mindset. Your singlet is brown. Pack it and throw it and buy another one. You have been buying chocolate. 150 naira. Buy polish for your shoe. Get an iron. Press your clothes well. If you're barbing, bab well. If you're leaving your hair, I trim it well. Be smart. Be smart. Behave like a leader. Don't be roaming around laughing anyhow. No. Behave yourself. Don't buy something and be eating on the road. You are eating granite, you are eating this. You eat something and you just throw it on the road. Behave as if you know that God is taking you far. It's a spirit of excellence. Don't keep your room unkept, untidy. Everything is not going well. You are just happy. Your notebooks are torn. Get something and fix it up. You buy your books, everything is torn. Your bed sheet is dirty. You are looking at it. You can't wash it. You can't clean it. You are waiting for somebody to do it. Polish your shoe. Take your time. Be smart. You may not have money to change your hair. But can't you comb it? Comb it. Look nice. When you want to cook food and give somebody. Prepare it. Package it well. Adopt the spirit of excellence in everything you do. When you want to greet people, take out time and greet them well. Greet like a leader. Don't greet like a failure. Don't join people in empty talks. Profitless talks. That's the realm of mediocre. Rise to where things are happening. Hallelujah. Finally pray and say, Lord, help me. Help me. Let me take this word seriously. Say, Lord, help me. Challenge me. Let me mix this word with faith. I receive grace to be a practitioner of this word. Please, ushers, position yourself inside and outside. Because there will be a rain in this place. Hallelujah. Listen. Be set free. Where did you come from? Please, technical, can you help us? Where did you come from? Bauchi, Bauchi State. Okay, from Bauchi. Yes. I want you to know that God will do a miracle in your life. Amen. You believe that? Yes, I believe. You came full of faith. Yes. The Lord will set you free right now. Amen. By the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In the name of the Lord Jesus, that devil, come out of him right now. In the name of the Lord Jesus, just breathe in and out. Breathe in and out. I set you free right now. At the power of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Now, listen. Listen. Please. I want to see those who have heart conditions. You came here. Hear me outside, please. We don't have time to waste. We are not going to have to mention cases individually. But when, when we call your case, please run out. We are going to pray and see as far as God wants to finish fast so that we will end quickly. Heart conditions. Leave your seat and come out here quickly. Either a hole in the heart or an abnormal heart formation. Quickly, quickly, appreciate them as they line up here. Ushers, coordinate them. Heart conditions. Please, come and line up here quickly. That devil is a liar. Heart condition. Growing up, they told you you have a heart condition. Come out and line up here. Come out and line up here. No matter how old you are or how young you are. Please line up, line up, straight line, 
Line up, usher, direct them, help them. Hallelujah. As you're standing here, I'd like you to wait by by to it. Because I know the unction of the spirit is here. God will set you free. Baba, God will set you free, sir. And everyone. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Now, sirs, we'll minister quickly. We'll just minister to them. Hallelujah. Praise God. I tell you, there is an unusual unction in this place. As hands are laid on you. Hallelujah. Return back thanking the Lord and check. If you are still seated in the crowd and you know you have a heart condition, don't sit back there. God wants to change your story. Hallelujah. There's someone who has an unusual palpitation. I don't know what it is. You, the way you, the way you breathe. Sometimes it's literally holding you and choking you. You are the one. Look at me. Because it's a devil of darkness. Your own is not just sickness. Look at me. In the name of Jesus. I command that devil of darkness. Let her go. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Let her go. 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 Right. Devil of darkness. Come out. Come out. Come out of her now. Come out of her now. In the name of Jesus. Out of her. Come. My sister, you too. Come. Some of you that are standing. As hands are laid, you will find out that it was in sickness. My dear, God will set you free right now. Because your own is an oppression. Look at me. Are you, are you listening to me? There is a devil that has oppressed this girl. You will go. 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 Go in the name of Jesus. The name of Jesus. Greater than any other name. Something is leaving you. I'm seeing a dark object coming out of you. Come out of her now. Sister, look at me. I'll pray for you. God will set you free. You believe that? Now thou foul devil, let this girl go round by the power of the Holy Ghost. Go! 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 Let her go in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I say, you won't hide. Come on, I see you in the spirit. Go out of her in the name of the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Janka, please. Minister Jakes, Bishop. Let's begin to, as they lay hands, they will speak to your life. Don't just think they are laying hands. Hallelujah. Please stand. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. As hands are laid, begin to pray while you're standing. Out of him now. Be healed in the name of Jesus. Be healed now. I curse that devil of darkness. Go. 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 Be healed in the name of Jesus. Come out of her now. Come out of her. Come out of her. Come out of her. Come out of her. Out of her. Right, devil of darkness. Come out of her in the name of Jesus. Let him go. Let him go now. Let him go. Let him go. Go. Be healed. Sister, I curse that devil. Because I also see oppression in your sleep. That demon of darkness. Go in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus made whole right now be made whole oh God is not done with you God is not done with you be healed in the name of Jesus as you go back to your seat check yourself be healed right now be healed right now be healed right now be healed right now in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus 
In the name of Jesus, come out of her now. Come out of her. Come out of her. By the fire of the Holy Ghost. Out of her right now. In the name of Jesus. What's wrong? Be made free right now. In the name of Jesus. Be free right now. In the name of Jesus. Set you free. Set free right now. From every oppression. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Now, only outside, not inside. All of you outside, lift your hands. Not those inside. Please, those inside. Lift your hands, those outside. At the count of three, I want you to shout the name Jesus. The fire of God will terminate the works of darkness. So many of you are under influences of the devil. Hallelujah. Only those outside. At the count of three, as you shout, the power of God comes upon you. One. Two, three. Let the fire fall. I curse devils. I curse demons. Go, go, go. Bring them in, ushers. Go, go. Let the fire fall. Bring them in. Bring them in. The fire fall all across the building. Outside. All across. Fire is falling. Goes outside. One more time. Goes outside. Shout Jesus. Outside, God is not gone. Lift your hands. I release fire. 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 Take it. Take it outside. Take it outside. For this purpose, the Son of God, I see two ladies sitting in the same row outside. The fire of God comes upon you now. Right now, that oppression over your life. Two ladies sitting in the same room.
Look at me. We've not finished, so we've not finished. If it's possible, if it's possible, the ministers are going to separate themselves into three and walk across the crowd outside. No devil will survive today. Brother, I see a serpent, not a man. Come out of him now. Out of him now. A devil of darkness. Come out of him. Come out of him. I see a snake, not a man. Come out of him. Come out of him. Come out of him. Fire I'm seeing a snake, not a human being. You see the way he's behaving? Look at what he's doing. The fire of the Holy Ghost upon you. Come out of him. In the name of Jesus. The fire of the Holy Ghost upon you. The fire of the Holy Ghost upon you. Leave him, leave him, go. Go, go, go. As you touch me, you touch fire. The fire of the Holy Ghost upon you. The fire of the Holy Ghost. Come out of him. He must be free. Come out of him. Come out of him now. Come out of him. 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 Come out of him now. Fire upon you. Fire upon you. Fire upon him. Out. 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 Look at, he's free. Look up. Look at this gentleman. Someone who came oppressed of the devil. Brother, you are free in Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Pick him up. Stand up, my brother. Look at, see, he's even surprised. Look at. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on, look at me. Look at me. Do you know when you came out here? Where were you? You came outside. Help me with the mic. What's your name? Samuel. Eh? Samuel. Where are you coming from? Danaka. Look at this guy. Outside, he doesn't even know that he's here. Look at him surprised, looking at everybody. The Lord perfect you and set you free. Where was the lady you were praying for? Pray, this lady. See, I see an old woman. That's what I'm seeing. Turn this lady. I see a very old woman. Come on now. Come out of her. Come out of her. You're not done. Come out of her. Come out now. She lay down as though it's done. You are not done. You are spiritual people here. Out of her now. Out of her by the power of the Holy Ghost. Come out of her right now. That foul devil. In Jesus' name. Leave her alone. She's free. Look at. What's wrong with this woman? Who brought her? Please, if you brought someone, make sure you stand close to the person. Who brought mama? Who are you? Come. Well done. What's her name? Lydia. What's wrong with her? She has been bleeding for the past three years now. For the past three years. Look at. She had 
She had what? Dislocation. Now, so the, she could Since when? Mama, she can she talk? Yes, I can. Mama, how are you? I'm well. Well done, eh? What's the issue? Oh, this hand now is dislocated. Yes, it was since December last year. December? That I went to toilet on my way coming back. You see, you always, like you always know the signature of Satan when you see it. I'm not so, teaching you to be demon conscious. I'm back, just I telling just you that. On the you did what? I said on my way coming back. I found my on the way from the toilet. Yes. How old are you, Mama? I'm 51. 51. I found myself sitting on the ground. You not found that, yourself sitting on the ground. I, that, I don't know how it happened. Not that I fell down flat. So. And okay, come. You are her daughter. Let, let her talk. I was taken to a hospital that is not stroke because immediately it happened. My left hand and left leg seized. Your left I, leg right now is not moving. No, it's moving. What of your right hand? The what right, is wrong with that, it? No, nothing happened. It's only the left leg and the left hand that seized immediately. Then I was rushed to the hospital. So the bleeding will stop. No, and, no. The case of the bleeding is different from. I was taken to the hospital. That it was cancer of the womb. Cancer of the womb. Yes. You still have it. Yes. It's going to go. This is what so, I'm saying. That it was not stroke. That it was partial stroke. It was what? Partial stroke. Partial stroke. Then, the following, I was in the hospital for two weeks. I, I, know, I told them, the doctor, that I want him to discharge me. I want to go for prayer. So I went to, for prayer in Nosarawa State. So, the, the following day, in, in the prayer house... It's I time move, for you I to move, go. Go, move, go, go, go. Out of her now. Out of her now. Now in the name of Jesus. That devil. Out of her now. Fire on you. Fire on you. In the name of Jesus. Fire upon you. Go, go, go. Go. Sorry, mama. So, I move my leg. So, I... Okay, what, what, did, what, okay, so what is wrong with you right now? What, what did now, you come with right the now? Of the womb. Cancer because of the womb. Cancer of the womb. bleeding. Then. Your uh, hand. The hand. These are the two conditions. Now that I fell down flat. So I discovered that I have dislocation on my shoulder. So. Okay, it's all right. The hand has been fixed locally. But up to now, I couldn't move the hand. But I'll pray for you. I'll pray for you. Yes. All right. Can you feel my hands? Can you feel my hands? Yes. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. My God, do wonders in this hand right now. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Perfect this hand. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. That devil of darkness, your hold is taken from my hands. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. fingers yes. every pain go i command you to go you are of the spirit of darkness i challenge you try lifting it up lift both of your hands up try it just try lifting your hands up can you try lifting it up in the name of jesus you feel pains you feel pains where your shoulder By the power of the Holy Spirit, begin to move it more. In the name of Jesus, begin to move it. Start moving it. Start moving it. Start moving it. Start moving it. In the name of Jesus, I curse that devil. I curse that devil. Can you wind your hand? Try and wind this hand. Just look at me. Look at me.
that coughs out blood I'm seeing someone that coughs out blood you cough all the time you cough out blood please hurry up you cough out blood literally who is the person inside are they hearing me outside quickly if you identify that person let the person come you cough out blood literally come out Please clear the way for them. Ah, look at oppression. This is what I'm seeing. Come on now, get out of her. Out of her now. Out of her now. Out of her in the name of Jesus. Out of her now. Out of her, thou devil of darkness. I curse you by the power of the Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus. only this lady but the members of her family have been oppressed lay your hands on her chest in the name of Jesus I curse that power of darkness be free totally now in the name of Jesus since when for the past two weeks, for the past two weeks. have you gone to the hospital can I pray for you? You believe Jesus will lay your hands on your chest. You will feel a fiery sensation upon your chest right now. Now you hear my voice. Let her go. Go! Go! Hallelujah. Those of you inside, lift your hands. I'm going to ask the cymbal to clash and the string play. Listen, when that happens, the fire of the spirit will move across anyone here under any oppression of darkness. You must go. This is not a negotiation. Hallelujah. Lift your hands. At the count of three, begin to clash the cymbal. One, two, three. Kashatabata. Go, 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 Devils go. Satan be exposed. Satan be exposed. For this couple was the Son of God. Satan be exposed. Light shine. I release fire. 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 fire upon this congregation. Fire. 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 Fire upon you. Fire. Bring them out. Bring them out. Fire. 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 You can't stand it. No devil can stand it. Fire. Bring 
It's time for God's people to go. It's time for destinies to be open. It's time for what has made you to cry to end. Bring them out. Hey, I see you in the spirit. Leave her. Leave her. Go. 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 I see you in the spirit. Out of her. Out of her. Out of her. Out of her. Come out of her. Come out of her. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You are free in Jesus' name. Bring me a mic. I do these things to teach you a lesson. Madam, stand up. No, 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 not her. Not her. You are a devil of darkness. For how do you think you can hide in the presence of God's light? Look at me. Bring the mic for me. You are not gone completely, oh. You are a devil of darkness. Out of her now. On your mark, get set, go. Go, 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 go. Out of her. Come out of her now. Come out of her now. Come out of her now. Fire upon you. Fire upon you. Fire upon you. As you touch me, you touch fire. As you touch me, you touch the fire of the spirit. He make it is out of her now. Out, 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 out. Come out of her now. She's free. In the name of Jesus. It will not stand fire from my hands to your head. If I be a servant of God, you stand around fire in the name of Jesus. Come out of her. This woman's destiny has been tied down. Lord, who is the person? Let the fire of God catch up with the person right now. God shows me this room. There's one person. My hands. Let the fire of the spirit separate that person. Now. 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 Now.
Stand up, madam. Don't feel embarrassed. Calm down. Hallelujah. Look at me. Look at me. Look at me. I want you to look at me. Look at my eyes. Look at my eyes. See, this woman has suffered. You just see someone walking. Things are not going right. People speak all kinds of grammar and Satan is advancing. Mama, please come. Jangfa is going to speak to you. I sense, please, Mama. You're free. Take her outside. I see her coughing, whatever. Please take her outside for God's sake so we don't litter this place. Take her outside. I don't know if it's poison or whatever it is that she took. Take her outside. You're still not out. Go out, go out, go out now. Out, go out. Go out in the name of Jesus. Go out of her. Go out of her. Come, place your hand on this lady's chest. Out of her. Come out of her now. I release fire upon you. Foul devil. Out of her. Patata tata da kapa. Rakata posa tali. Rekete kete kete. Le gronto zopo rotata. Riata la kosiaba. Alright, your reign in this life is over. On your mark, set, go, 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 you can't stand it, go, go, go. I prophesy to you today. After today, your life will begin to move as if Satan does not exist. Amen. Are you listening to me? Every oppression, those outside hear me. Every oppression challenging your family through the greatness of the power that is in the name of Jesus that challenge will bow don't let her go bring her back come sweetheart look at me just look at me Look at my eyes. Look at my eyes. Just keep looking. Look at my eyes. Look at my eyes. I'm seeing your father's face on your face. Look at my eyes. Just look. For she will go free. The children shall not suffer the iniquity of their fathers. Right now, you and the spirit of death upon her get lost get lost get lost get lost Up your heads, O oh ye gates, be ye lifted, O oh ye ancient doors, and the King of Glory will come in. in Jesus' name.
You're free. Come, mama. Bring that lady who is falling. See, tonight, many of you, you will go back rejoicing. on her stomach. Out. 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 In the name of Jesus. What is it? Cancer. Who said so? The doctors. Lay your hands there. Lay. Kisan. Interpreter Selena, where is she? She's walking. Tell her Jesus, okay, okay. Tell her Jesus Christ is going to heal her right now. See, she's crying. See, tell her Jesus will heal her now. Is she looking at you? Look at her. Tell her, Mama, Jesus will heal you. Look at, look at, look at this. Look at this. Look at this. Look at this. This is somebody's mother. This is somebody's mother. of you outside, I want you to know that Jesus is in this place. There is someone I need in this room. The devil has oppressed you. And the Holy Ghost spoke to me. He said, come out. Two of you, all of you in this room, lift your hands. That devil is a liar. As I, I shout the name of Jesus, the fire of God will come. People, please let me in the mighty name of Jesus. I release fire right now. My father, locate those two people right now in the name of Jesus. Let the fire of God fall, fall, fall. Two of them, two of them. There's one already, two of them. Fall. Shatatatatatatata. Four, four, four. Sister, tonight is your night of salvation. Come out of her. Come out of her. Come up. Come out of her. Shut up. Out of them. 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 Bring them in. He who has the son. See, none of you will go back the same. Are you hearing me? None of you will go back. Who is Grace here? Who is by the name Grace? You are standing here. Your name is Grace. Who is Grace? Come in, sir. He who has the son. Has eternal life. We have the son. So we have eternal life. Time is up. Thou foul devil. Let this guy go. Go. Fire on you. Fire upon you. That devil of oppression. That devil. Leave him now. 
Come out of him. 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 Now fire upon you. Fire. Let him go. Let him go. Come out of him. Come out of him. Fire upon you. Fire upon you. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of you are not done. Out, out, out until he's completely free. Out. Little girl, be free. I separate you with this spirit. Go. 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 Time up. Time up. This lady is heavily oppressed. Out of her. Out devil of darkness. You came for koinonia. You're welcome. Out of her in the name of Jesus. Stand up, pick him up. Fire on you right now. It's time. It's time. It's time. You must go. Go. Bring him. You must go. This lady has been so tight. Now, listen. I need to explain something to you. Please follow me. It's not the people. Listen. It doesn't mean they are possessed with demons. Are you listening to me? So get that clear so that you don't carry your big mouth and start talking stories around. There are three levels of manifestation of Satan. Some of them are acutely possessed with demons. Some of them, devils influence their lives and destinies. So the fact that they are manifesting like they are possessed does not mean they are possessed. Are you hearing what I'm saying? That's why they don't even know. Pick him up. Kai, this guy has been so oppressed of the devil. This lady has dreams and she meets with people. Go out of her. Go out of her. Just let him, let him lie down when he's ready to stand up. This guy is so weak. He doesn't even know that he has been under all kinds of bondages of Satan. Pray. Let me pray for you. Mama, you believe Jesus has authority over cancer? You do? Because he's going to go. Oh yes, it will go. Hmm? There your hand is there. See, I, I'm touching it. It's looking like a stone. Out of her! Out of her! Out of her! Devil of darkness is not cancer, it's a spirit. Go out of her now. Go out of her now. Go out of her now. He was the son, has eternal life. Hallelujah. Mama, who brought Mama out? Eh? I said, who is Grace? Oh, I was actually talking about some. Bring the man or the wheelchair and on crutches. Let him come and stand here. Please, if we have not called your case, don't just come out. We'll give room for that. But let him stand. Sir, please, can you come and minister to this woman for time's sake? Bring him here. Sir, you're welcome. Look at me. What's wrong with you? Accident. On which leg? This leg. What's wrong with the leg? Operation. Operation. Yes. They did surgery and it's not working. You want to walk? Yes. You believe Jesus will set you free? Clear the way for him. He was the son. 
the name of the Lord Jesus look at me you believe in Jesus Christ can you walk without with it are you feeling pains where what of this leg look at me in the name of the Lord Jesus I set you free I command your leg to straighten out in the name of Jesus Christ look at me walk. come follow me Follow me. Can you walk? Try it. Just take a step and see. What's wrong with the legs? It's heavy. Ah, where? But can you bend it like this? Try and bend it. Go ahead. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Could you do this before? Could you do this before? God is healing you. Keep moving it. Move it. Move it. You just do what I'm telling you to do. Move it. Move it. Now move it like this. Move it like this. Move it like this. Move it like this. Can we try and walk now? Hold this one. Hold my hands. Walk. Let's walk. Let's walk. Let's walk. Try and match it down. Is it because of the metal? There's a metal inside his leg. So it's limiting him from walking. Hallelujah. So they must remove the metal. They can't, oh, they put it here permanently. Lord, let this metal become his bones. Amen. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. This metal Amen. Melt away. Ministers move across the crowd. We don't have time. Go ahead. Okay, Jamfa is already ministering. Some people outside just move and minister to people. Join them, Kenny. Someone should take on this role. Vivian. I'm hearing the name Vivian. Pastor, sir. Yes. Vivian. Who is Vivian? A fair lady called Vivian. No, no, a fair lady called Vivian. The Lord is showing me a fair lady called Vivian. Vivian. Sister, stand up. Look at me. Look at my eyes. Look at my eyes. Look at my eyes. Look at my eyes. Thou foul devil. Go! 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 In Jesus' name, be set free. Leave I alone. Vivian. What's wrong with you? Eh? People come to you and oppress you in a dream. Is that correct? Do you know me? Have, have I talked with you before? You want to be free? You'll be free right now. John, it's time for you to enter God's plan and purpose for your life. Are you listening to me? Because you are not supposed to be a photographer. Are you listening to me? You are supposed to have gone far beyond this level. God didn't just bring you to Koinonia to snap. Please take the, photo, the camera. Victor can snap, so be doing it in the interim. You believe what I'm telling you? Uh -huh, because I see that how many people drink in your family? Tell the truth and shame the devil. How many? Two people, sir. You and who? I don't drink, sir. 
again. You used to drink. Have you stopped completely? Praise God. But the Lord will set you free. Because in your family, women, uh -uh. you believe that? Eh? See, let me tell you the truth. This is not your destiny in Christ. This happened as a result of frustration. Is that correct? Many things, school didn't work. Many things happened. Even Waiek, you don't even have your complete result. Is that true? Help me. Is that true? That's true? God will set you free. Hallelujah. You believe that? I want to speak into your destiny and call it forth into where God wants you to be. That devil is a liar. Come out of him now. Come out of him. I release your glorious destiny. The days of oppression are over. Rise up beyond the photographer. Become the leader and the entrepreneur that God has destined for you to be. See, listen. It's not that this guy is lazy. I hope you know that. It's not that he's lazy. Ella, come. Abigail, come. Wumi, come. Three of you, come and stand here. For the sake of your families, the time has come. Out of her. Come out of her now. Come out of her in the name of Jesus. A devil of darkness. Out now. Now. Shatata rata. Reketele mo subariata. Brento capriata laka. Rakata baba baba baba. Out. Out. Fire upon you. Setele ke pariata. Even the lawful captives shall be delivered. Fire. 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 Be set free. Right now in the name of Jesus. You have a glorious destiny. No devil will hold you down. In the name of Jesus. Lawful captives be free. I release you. That devil of temper and anger. Go. Go. I command you be free. The plague of death over your family. Go. 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 I, come in, I command that terminal disease. Now it's time. Time up. Time up. You are a devil. Go in the name of Jesus. Be free. Fire upon you. Fire upon you. Fire upon you. That devil cannot stand. Fire upon you. It's time to be free. Time to be free. Time to be free. Leave her. Let her go. This lady has suffered too long. You've held her destiny down. Go in the name of Jesus. Once again, come. I stopped praying for you for a reason. Please take this guy up, this gentleman. Look at me. See? Cummings. Do you know that your life, listen, listen. I saw upon this guy the spirit of Cain. And I didn't know what it was. He was lying down there. That was why I walked there and laid my hands upon. You know the curse that was upon Cain? Bring them out. God is not done with them yet. You know the curse that was upon Cain? He said he won't die, but he will be a wanderer. This is how this guy's life has been. Today you are in Lagos. Tomorrow you are here. Next tomorrow you are this. It's time for your freedom. Free you. He was the son. Has the time. My dear, come and stand here. Yes. Come and stand here. Birthday girl. You are the one who celebrated your birthday yesterday. You're welcome. We are going to pray and minister to people. The ministers are, sir, you, you are done? Ah, please pray. Oh, please take time and speak into their lives. I beg you. These people came to receive. 
ministers go around please prophesy to them where's jam for jakes please please move around where are the people i called out now my dear you know the devil wants to make your life a waste so you are moving but you are not accomplishing anything but the lord loves you and tonight the eye of the lord is upon you hallelujah you believe that hold my hands both of your hands look at me just look at me lord let this lady be free from every oppression of darkness in the name of jesus be free I set you free by the power of the Holy Ghost. Look at me. I'm seeing you pregnant. Drive every useless man out of your life. Are you listening to me? I'm not saying you are pregnant now. I'm saying I'm seeing in the realm of the spirit, not physically. Hallelujah. Praise God. So don't, please kick any man who wants to come and talk grammar around you because I'm seeing that you are going to three countries number one South Africa huh? number two UK number three Canada these three countries the Lord is taking you there hold on but then I see a lot of resistance rising up from wherever I may not be able to talk all this with you because we're in the presence of people but I want to pray for you it's time to see three things will happen one a passion for God you cannot recover from the ministers are ministering to people around while they are that devil let me tell you cast out every devil prophesy release people to their prophetic destinies let her go Go! Go! Time up, thou devil of darkness. Be free now. Be free now. I command that wicked spirit. Depart from your life. Fire right now all over your body. I release the fire of the Holy Ghost. All over you. Right now. Leave her, let her go. For she shall not be called Jabez. That's what the Lord says, I should say. Because you were born in sorrow, you will not be called Jabez. Tonight, I enlarge your coast in the spirit. My dear, look at me. From today, you will walk into your prophetic destiny. See, you don't know what it is that has happened to you now. Even you, you cannot answer. But look at me. You are a very good girl. Are you listening to me? But you are assuming the character of another person. Tonight, the Lord sets you free. This lady is a wonderful lady beyond your imagination. But sometimes, you see her doing things that even her does not know. Because I see the spirit of anger and rage. I mean rage almost to kill somebody. But the Lord sets you free. And this is what I'm seeing in the spirit. I'm seeing you move from the side and you are climbing a ladder and the Lord says, restore. This is what I prophesy. Restore. This is what will begin to happen to you. Restore. Hallelujah. If I, if I, hearing the name, if I, if I, who is if I? If I now, if you brought someone for healing from outside Zaria, quickly bring them phone. Quickly, we have to round up. Quickly, please bring them. If you invited someone, no matter how far you are outside, bring the person, sir. Come, it's time for the Lord to set you free, not only in your health. 
but on every area of your life. Do you believe that? Hold my hands. Both of your hands. All right now, I speak to you. I open up that door. I challenge the works of darkness. Go! By the fire of the Holy Ghost. One, two, three. The Lord perfects you. Who brought this man? What's wrong with him? Bring them forward. He has what? His sight. He used to be bigger than this. But what happened? Because I'm seeing something like a rock upon his head. Who is Silvanus? Sir, does he drink? Who is your friend that drinks? He's drinking. You need to get him born again and see what's with him. Alright? I want to pray for you right now. Your weight will come back. Your life will be restored. And your eyes, you will begin to see clearly. Hallelujah. Estefanus. Silvanus. From where? From Haido Road. From where? Haido Road. Eh? I A U. Hein Dogo. Ah, okay. You are born again. You love Jesus Christ. But you won't do ministry the way you are planning. You will start afresh with God. Alright? So disable all those man of God things. You will start afresh. Primary one, two, three, four, five. God will anoint you. Right? I'm going to pray for you. You believe what I'm saying. And leave all your friends who are deceiving you. Huh? You are going to be a great man, but you are not yet that man, so you will stay in the school of the spirit. Hmm? These teachings that you people jump and pride over, they are basic things in the spirit. Let God work with you. From today, you begin a new journey. Hold my hands. Lord, put a fire upon him right now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. A new beginning, fresh start. Just breathe in and out as deep as you can. In and out. Baba, be free. Be free in the name of Jesus. Be free in the name of Jesus. Now, by the power of the Holy Ghost. Who brought him? He came on his own. What's wrong with you? Migraine. Put your hands on your head. Lay it. But he will first set you free. Then you will begin a walk with him. Any appetite and anything that does not belong to him will give way. You will be surprised what you will begin to do in your life. Okay? Look at me. What am I doing? One leg in. Where is the other leg? Why? Because this is how your life is. It's time for you to love him with every passion. Hmm? So I break everything that is not of God in the realm of the spirit. Let the fire of God take over. Take over your life. Take over her life. Foul spirit, let her go. Lord, anoint her and use her. Affect my life, breathe on me. I look to you for life. Affect my life, breathe on me. Please, 
do it quickly. Someone help her. Lift up your hands. I look to you. the sun rising over your family and then I heard this song I will wait for you Jesus you're the sun in my the days of oppression are over you are standing on behalf of your family Something is happening to your father right where I'm holding. The Lord is setting him free. Today the Lord is giving you the mantle that was upon your mother. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Because as I look at you I see her face. And the Lord says I should tell you to run with the spirit of power. Whatever you decree will happen. The Lord will establish you and you will be a mother indeed. That all your times of tears will be taken away by a new joy. Take this message to your father, for the Lord visits your family tonight. What was I doing? Okay, the ministers are still... Okay, those that are around, Pastor Williams is here. Just, the ministers are ministering, let them continue, but... Those that are around, even if it's just me and Pastor Williams, please, let's pray on the request. After we pray on the request, I'm going to begin to move prophetically and speak. This is the time you will receive. Are you listening to me? Stretch your hands towards this prayer request and begin to pray in tongues. Bishop. your hands shaba la bara do krasta bara bara rata kata prata kada bara bara bash paro ka prande pradeshita do miracles oh god ma rekata bara 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 bash solve every problem here oh god and for all our facebook twitter Egyptians, you see them no more. These 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 Egyptians. You are conquered. Whatever is conquered here is conquered. All over this country and around the world, we release testimonies, miracles in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, Lord, by your spirit, Lord, by your hand, Lord, by your spirit. Lord, by your great power, let there be miracles on this request. Miracles, supernatural miracles, terminate sicknesses, terminate diseases, never to return. Creative miracles in the name of Jesus. All supernatural jobs, supernatural wisdom, let it be done by your spirit. Miracles by your spirit. Supernatural miracles by your spirit. Thank you, mighty God. In Jesus' mighty name. I found a reason why I sing. 
of learning I prophesied by the power of the highest I call this session for you a season of seven fold restoration seven fold restoration seven fold seven fold not one fold not two fold I speak it. Where you have been victimized, any student here who has been victimized right now, whether it is project or service year or whatever, I change it in the realm of the spirit. Any one of your loved ones that has no job between today and the middle of April, I command fearful supernatural jobs in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Every womb called Barry, I don't care whether the womb has been removed or not right now in nine months time you will celebrate miracle children be open every barren womb be open hallelujah every plague of death over your life or your family members make sure you are lifting your hands to every plague of death by the blood that speaketh better things because I see miscarriages that the devil wants to bring to many families I see miscarriage of children every plague of death I command it to pass over you forever in 
in the name of Jesus. He said, because thou hast loved righteousness and hated wickedness, therefore God, even thy God, has anointed you with a type of oil called the oil of gladness that sets you above your fellows. The anointing that brings you above. I call you in the realm of the spirit. Rise up in the name of Jesus. Rise up. A new level of prosperity. A new level of lifting. A new level of wisdom. And Jesus grew in wisdom, in stature, and in favor with God and with men. As surely as the Lord God of Israel lives, let a cloak of favor hit you where you are. Favor! 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 Every terminal disease in this place, HIV, cancer, in the name of Jesus, we terminate it once and for all. Be free in the name of Jesus. Be free in the name of Jesus. SS, AS, we change your genotype in the realm of the spirit in the name of Jesus. Every demonic oppression that is responsible for where you are and where your family is tonight. It is time for the new anointing. Guard up your loins and be ready. Every yoke of bondage surely must be broken. I command every captivity over your family by the shed blood of Jesus Christ. Captivity ends in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I'm standing in the spirit before a gate. And the Lord is telling me, let God's people walk to it and move forward in their life. I command you by the spirit and according to the vision of the Lord to me, move forward. Go forward. No more stagnation. In ministry, enter your place of anointing. Enter your place of rest. Enter it. I place you inside it. I take you into the mantle of your life. The prophetic oil of your life. I release it. Move forward. Go forward. In the name of Jesus Christ. And I speak to you. Every Egyptian you see today. You are the one who knows the Egyptian. So lift your hands with faith in your spirit. Everything called an Egyptian. As surely as the Lord God of Israel lives. Once and for all. Bye bye to them forever. Bye bye to them forever. In your family. Bye bye to them. Bye bye to them. I release signs. Wonders. I release miracles. Take it. Take it. Take it. Take it. From the depth of my heart. According to the order of grace. Take your miracle. Take your miracle. Take your miracle. Everything your hand touches from today. In the name 
that is above all names. I command it to multiply. My brother, stand here. Bring this lady, come. This is what I'm demonstrating to you, what I saw in the spirit. That God is connecting you to the people who will take you to the next level of your life. May the Lord take you where your gift will be needed. May the Lord take you where your gift, I command demand upon your oil. Demand, prophetic demand. I command every uncompleted family project every uncompleted family project the Lord shows me the number 21 in the realm of the spirit and I pray that between now and the next 21 days I command angels of help I release it to your families receive it receive it help help is coming Zion's help the helper of Zion move across families move across families I tell you as surely as the Lord lives between today and the next 21 days you will see fearful testimonies by the hand of God hallelujah lift your hands I impart spiritual gift upon you at the count of seven let fresh fire fall upon everybody Every one, two, three. My God, do it. I see angels. Four, five, six. There it is. Come on. Take it. Take it. Take it. Take it. Take it. Outside. Take it. Take it. Take it. In the name of Jesus. Take it. Take it. Take it. Fire. The prophetic. The apostolic. The evangelistic. Teaching mantles. Pastoral graces. Leadership. Entrepreneurship. I fire it into your spirit everywhere you have been deserted so that no man goes through you I call you an eternal excellency and a joy of many generations in the name of the Lord Jesus doors be open breakthrough breakthrough many of you don't know what breakthrough is you just receive it breakthrough I release it breakthrough I release it breakthrough I release it breakthrough an angel stands in this row take it breakthrough Take it, take it, take it, take it, right to the back, take it, take it. Tonight the Lord gives you a new name. Whatever you came here for, whatever request you brought, 
I command go back with a testimony go back with a complete testimony whatever you came here with go back with a testimony in the name of Jesus and every one of you who came from far and near to catch a fire and catch an anointing go back with that fire go back and reproduce these things and even greater receive it receive it Thank you, Jesus. Rabata Shalabakuria. Now, listen. The Bible says, For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him shall not perish. Listen to me, everybody, inside and outside. You're here and you've been struggling with your life. The Lord has been speaking to you. You know that now is the time to make it right with the Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible says, Whosoever will come to me, I will in no wise cast away. He said, Come unto me, all ye that are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Hallelujah. You've never made this decision for the Lord Jesus Christ. Especially many of you outside. Tonight is your night. Jesus is calling you. Jesus is saying, How long? Will you run away when I have a better life for you? When I can save you from eternal condemnation and lead you to the path of grace? Or you've given your heart to the Lord, but you found yourself derailing. Please, as you hear my voice, do not harden your heart. Hallelujah. At the count of three, inside and outside, I want you to leave your seat and rush out here. The Lord is calling you. You've not given your heart to the Lord. Leave your seat. They are coming. Appreciate them. Right now, leave your seat. Come right to the front. Clap for them. They are coming. Thank you, Jesus. You need to make it right to the Lord. Come out. Or you've been born again once, but you've derailed. Don't stay outside. No matter how far you are, find your way to the front. Forget about your friend. Please run quick. Quick, quick, do it fast. Keep clapping, Koinonia. Thank you, Lord, for a harvest. Don't sit back. There are still more people outside. The Holy Ghost is speaking to you. Don't wrestle with him. Sister, brother, the time has come. There are still more people I see outside. Keep coming. We'll wait for you for one minute. Keep coming. No matter what you've done, there is a fresh start. Celebrate them. The devil is a liar. He will not hold you back. The devil is a liar. The devil is a liar. Hallelujah. Keep coming. Keep coming. You're welcome. Keep coming. Hallelujah. Thank you, brothers and sisters, for making this decision. Hallelujah. I'd like to pray for you. I'd like to lead you to Jesus Christ. It doesn't matter how far and how long you have gone. The Lord can give you a new start tonight. Are you listening to me? The Lord can give you a new start tonight. No matter how far you have gone. No matter how far you have gone. No matter how far you have gone. Lift your right hand to heaven and say after me, Lord Jesus, mean it from your heart. This is not a Bible recitation. Lord Jesus, I come before you acknowledging you as my Savior. I believe you died for me. I believe you rose again for me. Today, I receive the gift of salvation. Come into my heart. Give me a new start. In the name of Jesus, 
I denounce sin. I denounce Satan. Make me a new person. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. From today, forward ever, backward never. The things I used to do, I'll do them no more. Because Jesus is Lord of my life. Father, I commend these ones to you. They have come out to make a genuine decision. Because they love you and they acknowledge you. My God, I pray that their salvation be genuine. And I pray that from today, you begin a walk in their lives. I command that you are free from every challenge you used to go through. In the name of the Lord Jesus, let peace return to your heart. Holy Spirit, I commend you to these ones. This is the assignment you have given on earth. I pray that you do great things in their life. In the name of Jesus, my brother, you are the one who drove me one time. The Lord will begin to do great things in your life and even in your family for this great decision you have made. In the name of Jesus, appreciate them in Jesus' name. Now, in one minute, I'd like you to follow the elder. I said the elders. Follow the ushers. Hallelujah. And they'll be able to have your details and will follow you up. When, sir? Jakes. Monday. Tomorrow. Tomorrow, what time? Tomorrow, 7 p.m. on the dot. Please be at chapel. Pastor Jakes will be following you up. We'll have foundational teachings that will bring, to guide you, and you'll be filled with the Holy Spirit. Ah, okay. The small ones, please. The very young ones, you're welcome. You can come by 4 p.m., all right? So that you are not roaming around 4 p.m. If you have to explain to your parents, please tell them you got born again. And if you need, if your parents want to talk to any of the ministers to confirm, no problem. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Now, follow the ushers. God bless you. Appreciate them. You're worshiping with us for the first time. This is your first time of attending this glorious meeting called Koinonia. I'd like you to leave your seat and jump out quickly. Quickly. Appreciate them. Come on, Koinonia. There are many people outside. We celebrate you. Come on. Koinonia celebrates you. Give them a big welcome. If there's anybody sitting close to you who is coming for the first time, ask the person to come out. We have a blessing for you. Keep clapping. Wow. Keep clapping. They are coming. Please hurry up. Hurry up. Make way for them. Ushers, direct them. Thank you. Keep coming. Thank you, mommy. Keep coming. Keep coming. There's still space for you. There's still space. We acknowledge you and we want to tell you thank you for coming. Hallelujah. This is Koinonia. Put together by Eternity Network International. We thank God for what he's doing in our midst. How many of you were blessed tonight? I assure you, you will never be the same. You will go back and meet fearful testimonies. I assure you, you will know you met God tonight. In the name of Jesus. Thank you so much for coming. We love you. We truly celebrate you for making our time and the sacrifice to come here. Hallelujah. We are here every Friday building the word and helping us to understand the Holy Spirit and walk in partnership with him. We want to pray for you and prophesy upon you. Saints of God, stretch your hands upon them. Listen, we are anointed. So if we pray for you, believe it, it will happen in your life. Father, we pray that you bless them. Anoint everyone. May the Lord give you a testimony that will confirm that you met God tonight. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. May the Lord give you a testimony. Come out of her now. Out. Now. Out of her. Come out of her. Your testimony starts. Come out. Out of her now. now. Devil, come on. Out. Out of her. Come out of her. Out. 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 Out.
out. Shataba kata kata balana kata. Grande ke presta kata la kada mana. You have oppressed her for too long. She came for koinonia. Thou devil of darkness. All right, your time is up. Go. Now. Fire upon you. Fire upon you. That demon of lust, leave her. Now. Now. In Jesus' name. You are free. In Jesus' name. Pick her up. Sister, you have received a visitation from the Lord. For you would have gone back with the same problems you carried and brought here. But the Lord has visited you tonight. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. And for every one of you, don't you think we are playing when we are praying for you? We truly pray that you will go back with a testimony and an experience. That the things you used to do that are not consistent with the Lord, you will do them no more. Every bad relationship you came here with, we break it. You will go back, you won't find the other people again. In the name of Jesus Christ. May the Lord connect you to destiny help us. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And every bondage of Satan. We set you free from it. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you so much. I'd like you to quickly follow the ushers. They'll have your details. And we'll pray for you. And follow you up. We are here every Friday. The Lord bless you. Keep coming and invite others in Jesus name. Celebrate them and appreciate them as they go back. Let's take the following announcements very quickly and we're out of here. Presbyo Consults Nigeria presents the Real Entrepreneurs Forum. Hallelujah. How to start and grow your business, how to raise capital, why most entrepreneurs fail, and so on and so forth. This is a business meeting. The facilitators are Mr. Femi Bolaji, the CEO of Intact Pharmaceuticals, Mr. Francis Yusuf, CEO Real Eagles Prince, and Mr. Victor Mataya, CEO, Aspire Network. The date is tomorrow, 23rd of February. Saturday time is 9 p.m. The venue is VET Multipurpose Hall. Watch out for the posters, and please be there tomorrow, 9 a.m. in the morning. Hallelujah. This was put together by one of us. Please honor him and get blessed. Hallelujah. We are proud of this. Hallelujah. I think this is Isaac, right? That's Isaac. Hallelujah. We are proud to dedicate our new envelopes for mission and our school of ministry. Are you happy about that? <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. We've made envelopes for our school of ministry. And we've made envelopes for missions. So from today, anytime you are coming for Koinonia, Hallelujah. As the Lord blesses you and as the Lord grants you grace, Come prepared not only to give your offering, but we'll drop the envelopes. You may not need to make any special call. You have your seed, whatever, from this night to sow into the school of ministry. These are arms of ENI. Hallelujah. The school of ministry is directed by Bishop Stan, and the missions is directed by Jakes. Hallelujah, Pastor Jakes. So I'd like you to be part of what God is doing. Hallelujah. So every time you come from next week, inside and outside, we'll just drop the envelopes. You have your tithe, offering, and then appropriately just put in your seed there and we'll pray on it and speak into your life. I want to assure you that this house is fruitful ground. Hallelujah. By the grace of God, we are faithful with every money that comes and we use it for the reason why it was given. We dedicate this in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Father, we thank you for what you are doing in this house. We pray that everyone who will give for our school of ministry to raise and to train our students and to train generals in the spirit, my God, I pray that you will cause them to flourish and enjoy your blessings in the name of Jesus. And we pray for our mission, oh God, as we visit hospitals, prisons, police centers, 
mission fields and we supply welfare to many people my god i pray that whoever partners with this project will experience an open heavens we dedicate this it will only be used for the glory of the king no man will be glorified but jesus alone we dedicate it in jesus name god bless you hallelujah from after the service if you feel god is leading you the em the envelopes don't go with them please you just come and we'll place them there and then you just drop your seed house on the rock foundation zaria presents tehila africa a crazy african praise the date is 28 february time is 10 30 pm venue is charity and faith missions ministering will be steve strings and many more dress code strictly traditional hallelujah this is announcement from our school of ministry the closing date for the submission of the forms for eni school of ministry is next week friday please listen carefully next week friday will be closing for all the prospective students and now the director has instructed that um the fact that you have the form does not mean you, you are automatically a student. Hallelujah. And he said, you hold on with the school fees. We are going to go through um, a screening process and then we'll place the list. Am I right, sir? Bishop? Am I correct? Okay. And by the grace of God, the Lord has granted us grace to secure a venue. We'll be using God's time for our school of ministry. Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise the Lord. He granted it unto us free of charge. Absolutely free. Hallelujah. We thank God for it. Learn to celebrate what God is doing in the house. So please, the first of March, are there still forms? Okay, well, there are still forms. I understand that there are some of you, especially those who are from Kano and Mina. You can meet Bishop afterwards and you get it. And I know there was a pastor that told me he would be around Please wait and collect it for yourself. Hello, beloved in Christ. We hope this message was a blessing to you. I would want you to do something for us. If you are new here, kindly hit on that subscribe button for us. And then like this video as well. Share to your family and friends to bless them. Because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body, to their soul, and to their spirit. We would need you to do one thing for us too. Tell us in the comment section where you were watching us from. And if you've got any testimony for us, kindly share with us. Thank you for watching.